Hello there, good morning. Welcome to breakfast with me, John Kay, in Westminster today, where the Queen's body lies in state for a fourth and final day. And Nina Warhurst is in the studio in Salford. Here are headlines this morning. The US President Joe Biden has arrived in the UK ahead of the Queen's funeral. He will be meeting King Charles, along with other world leaders, at Buckingham Palace a little later. It's been announced that big screens in towns and cities across the UK will show tomorrow's funeral, along with 125 cinemas. Meanwhile, thousands of people continue to queue to pay their respects. The Queen's body will lie in state for another 24 hours. Away from Westminster, today's other headlines. A man's been charged with attempted murder after two police officers were stabbed in London's Leicester Square. And in sport, Sun Hung Min scores a stunning 13-minute hat-trick as Tottenham continue their unbeaten run in the Premier League. Hello there, good morning. It's Sunday the 18th of September. You're watching BBC Breakfast from Westminster today. And the US President Joe Biden has arrived in the UK ahead of the Queen's funeral tomorrow morning. And this is, as today marks the last full day of the Queen's lying in state here, with people warned that the waiting time is now at least 14 hours. This is the queue, not far from where we are at the Palace of Westminster, the final stage before people enter Westminster Hall. You can see it's moving pretty quickly at the moment. It seems like the authorities are keen to get people through as quickly as they can right now, so that uh, they can get through the, the huge numbers which still remain and which are likely to build as Sunday goes on. Well, meanwhile, this morning, the Queen Consort, Camilla, has recorded a televised tribute to the Queen, praising her for carving her own role in a male-dominated world, as Duncan Kennedy reports. Two countries united by one grief. President Biden landing last night at Stansted with the First Lady ahead of tomorrow's funeral. He's one of around 500 heads of state and dignitaries taking part. From presidents who cross oceans to people who line rivers, Mr. Biden arrives in a capital whose center has been transformed. Keep on going, guys, keep on going. At its heart, a queue whose length is measured in hours, not yards. Some even have proof. I've been here for eight hours and 14 seconds, uh, 14 minutes. <laughs> I've, that's how long I've been here for. <laughs> At times, the queue has been 10 miles long. For some, the walking brings weariness <laughs> and a need to loosen the limbs. Not far behind them, someone honoured by the Queen, who knows all about pace and perseverance. In my head, it's like I have to join this queue. So I stopped all my plans the weekend, got on the train this morning, uh, met some friends to change my clothes, and here I am. The queue's tempo has varied, but has consistently remained patient and determined. To many here, the Queen is not a, but the national treasure. She's given us so much. She's given us her whole life. And I just rang Mum and I said, I think we just need to go. What does she mean to you, the Queen? I think quite a lot, because obviously we've all grown up with her being obviously our Queen and she's had such an impact on all our lives. I think she means quite a lot to all of us. I was a guardsman myself. Um, 
working outside Buckingham Palace and, and the Tower and Windsor Castle. Um, I feel quite a, a close uh, affinity with the royal family, um, especially the Queen. Um, I've met her on occasions um, and I just think it's my duty to come down and, and show my respects. When this queue does finally close and the last person files past the Queen's coffin sometime early tomorrow morning, it will mark the end of an unprecedented act of collective tribute. Attention will then move from Westminster Hall to Westminster Abbey for the funeral. Last night inside Westminster Hall, standing sentinel to their beloved grandmother, the Queen's eight grandchildren, posted to all sides of the plinth. A symmetrical display of her extended family's devotion. Flowing around them, those who've come to pay respects to a long royal life, bookended by coronation and commemoration. Westminster Hall carrying the solemnity of a cathedral amid the silence of a library. The Prime Minister of Australia, Your Majesty. At Buckingham Palace, King Charles has been meeting some of the Commonwealth leaders who've arrived for the funeral. They included the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. He's previously declared himself a Republican, but said such matters were for another time. At Windsor Castle, they've been moving tens of thousands of flowers from well-wishers inside the castle grounds, ready for the burial ceremony, with the blooms all facing towards Her Majesty's beloved home. Tonight at 8pm, the country will hold a national moment of reflection for one minute to stop and think about the life and legacy of the Queen. It comes ahead of tomorrow's funeral, a momentous occasion of state, a family farewell and a full stop moment in this nation's history. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News. Well, this is the scene above the Palace of Westminster this morning, the Union flag at half-mast there on St Stephen's Tower. There's a stillness in the air, there's a silence in the air as well. Remember the people we're seeing in the queue as they approach Westminster Hall right now. I've been here for, for 12, 14 hours. They've queued over the night while you and I have been asleep. They have just been walking slowly, from the other side of the bridge, the other side of the River Thames, as they approach here, uh, making friends, chatting, uh, but thinking very much about what they're doing and why they're here. Now, the Queen Consort, Camilla, has recorded a televised tribute to the late Queen, where she recalls her unforgettable smile and praised the Queen for her strength throughout her reign. And we can play some of that statement now. She has been part of our lives forever. I'm 75 now and I, I can't remember anybody except the Queen being there. It must have been so difficult for her being a solitary woman. And there weren't women prime ministers or women presidents. Um, she was the only one, so I think she carved her own role. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile, you know, that smile is unforgettable. Well, that full interview with Camilla, the Queen uh, Consort, will be aired on BBC One shortly before a National Minute Silence, which takes place at eight o'clock tonight. Now, today is the fourth and final full day that the Queen's Coffin will lie in state here in Westminster Hall. It was announced last night that the accessible queue for people with disabilities has already been permanently closed to new entrants after reaching full capacity. Uh, visitors in the main queue, uh, that's what we're seeing here, uh, they've been warned that the waiting time from the back is currently at least 14 hours. It's likely to get even longer as Sunday goes ahead. And our reporter, Lauren Moss, is at the back of the queue for us this morning. Uh, Lauren, how are you? How is everybody getting on there? Morning, John. Yes, just a, a few miles away from you at what is 
the very start of what's going to be a long day for many people here in Southwark Park, setting off on their route to pay their respects to the Queen lying in state in Westminster Hall. And this is Southwark Park, the very start of the, of the queue, and it's split into four zones. This is zone one. And over here, you can see some people collecting their coloured wristbands, which they will wear, and it numbers them throughout the queue so they can dip out and get a drink if they want to and then go back in so they don't lose their place. And I'm just going to try and uh, grab some some people to speak to us. Hi there, Hi. we're from BBC News. Can you just talk to us about... Uh... As you can see, everyone's very much in a rush to try and get in. But as you mentioned there, the uh, accessibility queue was closed yesterday afternoon. They're not allowing anybody else into that queue. But we did speak to a man overnight, Ibrahim, who's recently had a bypass surgery. And he was hoping to join that queue, but wasn't able to. So instead, he's now toughing it out on the long route like everybody else. Good morning. I've been through a uh, um, quadruple heart bypass in February um, because some of, uh, and I've been through cancer twice before and uh, I found out that some of the cancer treatment damaged my uh, arteries so I had to have this operation. I was hoping to join the accessible uh, queue but uh, unfortunately they closed it down permanently so this is the only way for us to, to do it so we're braving it up. Just one sec. No, well, we're, speaking, we're in the queue was... now and we've just uh, met this lady who's here from France and just yeah. collected her wristband. Why was it important for you to come? Why are you here? To pay my respect for the Queen, for the people, I'm for the to... country. Yeah. yeah, really. And you ready for a long day ahead? Maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. So as you can see, not many people wanting to stop and talk to us at this moment because they are racing on their way uh, down towards the Thames path. Well, they'll snake along uh, the River Thames, making their way towards Westminster Hall, but uh, they won't be getting there probably until early evening. And what we're going to see now is a bit of a, a balancing act with those managing the queues and those stewards that have been working day and night to make sure that anybody who's entering that queue gets through to Westminster Hall before the queue closes uh, officially at 6 30 tomorrow morning but likely to close much sooner before that to make sure that everyone arrives here gets to go through we're going to try and find some more people to speak to john and we'll keep you updated throughout the morning all right lauren thank you very much indeed you found one well done i guess that's the thing isn't it people want to get into that queue and get moving as soon as they possibly can uh, when they join it especially if they've traveled far like uh, that lady has from France. Uh, we're assuming that as the day goes on, the authorities will have to give some sort of indication about when that cut-off point will be, if people will need to plan if they're heading to London. So we'll bring you any news on that as the programme goes on this morning. Now, of course, religion was a significant influence throughout the Queen's life, and her funeral tomorrow will, of course, uh, reflect her deep personal Christian faith. And our religion editor, Aline Makbul, has been looking at what the Queen's private faith meant to her and the role it played throughout her life and her reign. Throughout her reign, in good times and bad, the Queen drew heavily from her faith to guide her. And this little church on the edges of the Balmoral estate was a place she held dear. She came to services at Crathy Kirk all her life with very little ceremony. Though there was a royal seat, on a royal pew where she always sat. The Queen was a very regular churchgoer. If she was here, almost always would come to church. For 15 years, Ken Mackenzie was domestic chaplain to the Queen. And He'll be among those at Windsor for her final service. Some of the moments I would cherish most would be moments when the, the Queen would speak to me as a parish minister. I remember being over there one evening. So I asked her what her favourite hymn was, she said to me that her fondest memory ever of a Christian song was her father singing to her at her bedside as, the, as she was going to bed. The hymn she remembered her father singing was based on the parable of the sheep lost in open country. Although the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. Lord Sentamu, former Archbishop of York, is one of a small team that came up with the original order of service yes. for the Queen's funeral. He says her knowledge of scripture was remarkable. She knows the Psalms by heart and can recite them. 
So you can be in a conversation. Um, one time, you know, she was going through quite a trying period. We've been talking and suddenly I lift up my eyes the hills. Whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And you knew whatever difficulty she's going through, her anchor is in God. And it was that anchor of her faith that once led the Queen to say this. As dark as death can be, particularly for those suffering with grief, light and life are greater. Aline McBool, BBC News. Well, details of how you can watch the Queen's funeral tomorrow have now been released. We can give you that information. So uh, the State Funeral Service is being held at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning in Westminster Abbey. It's going to be broadcast on TV, of course, uh, here on BBC One on ITV and on Sky. And for those wanting to be there in person, there will be special viewing places along the route of the funeral procession here in London and then later in the day also in Windsor. And the public procession in London will be between Westminster Abbey and Wellington Arch, while the Windsor procession will travel along the Long Walk uh, before going inside the castle grounds. That's where a private service for the family and close friends will be. There will also be big screens and 125 cinemas showing the services around the UK. So huge numbers of people expected to watch and experience that tomorrow. Charlotte Gallagher is with us this morning. Hi, Charlotte. Uh, you've been watching this queue over the last three days. One more day of people watching and chatting to go. What are you noticing about what people are saying this morning? It's strange, a lot of people are saying they had no intention of joining this queue a few days ago. Then suddenly they find themselves getting up at midnight and coming down because almost they say it's like a magnetism to join the queue. They want to be here, to have that experience, to be in this queue. We've seen people taking selfies with each other, total strangers, 12 hours ago. But at the end, they want to take a photo to remember that day. And you also see people who perhaps haven't planned, they've made the decision spur of the moment, perhaps on the way home from work, and they're in flip-flops, they're in high heels, and they're standing for 12 hours. And that's why it's been so good that you've had the scouts, you've had the Red Cross handing out blankets, hot drinks. What's been really humbling as well is a number of veterans, especially elderly veterans you've seen, making their way through this queue over hours and hours. They've got their medals pinned to their chest. They've got their beret on. And I spoke to one lady yesterday who served in Iraq and she said she just felt it was so important for her and her son that was with her to pay their respects to the Queen. And she said it was her commander in chief and she felt she had to be here for this. It's good to see people have come prepared with hats and thick coats on because it's been, I don't think it's been quite as chilly last night, but uh, the last couple of nights have been much colder than uh, we've been seeing of, of late. I was really relieved when I got up this morning and I saw the weather forecast because when I got here yesterday morning, I was bundled up, but some people were just in thin jackets and they looked so cold. One woman said after about four hours, her whole body was aching. So today, a lot more people, I think, are a bit more wrapped up against the elements. But it's strange, you'd think queuing for that number of hours, the mood would be quite grumpy, I suppose. But actually, people are chatting to each other, they're laughing. Yesterday, when they were told it's only another 45 minutes to go, there was a big cheer that went up in the crowd people sharing snacks, sharing drinks, sharing stories, lots of photos being taken. It's a really, really lovely atmosphere. And what country does queues better than Britain? We're showing the world what we can do, <laughs> aren't we? Um, and it's interesting as, as you get closer, as they get closer and closer and closer to the hall, and we're right outside of the Palace of Westminster here, uh, you notice that uh, it kind of gets quieter. You get that ebullience and almost relief that people experience initially as they meet one another and they chat and they take those selfies Charlotte was talking about. But then as they approach here, just outside the palace, uh, and they confront the reality of what they're about to experience, then it kind of calms down and it becomes much quieter and people prepare to enter Westminster Hall. Well, you can follow all the events and developments leading up to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II uh, on BBC News, on the website and on iPlayer. Uh, we will, of course, be back with more throughout breakfast this morning and on BBC One throughout the day. But we were talking then about it being slightly warmer here last night. Uh, Chris has the weather for London, for the queue and for the rest of the UK this morning. Hi, Chris.
Thanks, Chris. We will, of course, be back with John and the team in Westminster throughout the morning. But at 20 past six, let's take a look at the day's other news. There. Now, we talked a lot on breakfast this week about the Queen's passion for horses and that passion cemented a decades long friendship with the Carnarvon family who should regularly visit their High Clare estate in North Hampshire. The Earl and Duchess of Carnarvon have been sharing their memories of the monarch with our reporter Steve Humphrey. <laughs> Highclere Castle, one of Britain's iconic stately homes, set in 5,000 acres near Newbury. Over the years, Her Majesty the Queen was a regular visitor. It was somewhere where she could sit and have a cup of tea and talk and relax, away from any cameras or any other people looking over her shoulder, perhaps. It was just something aside from, from the really serious, uh, detailed affairs of, of, of state and, and absolute stresses in, in, in that kind of area. Famous and instantly recognisable as the setting for the TV series Downton Abbey, the real life Highclere is the home of the Earl and Countess of Carnarvon. It's quite fun with the one of you and all The connection between the Queen and Highclere was her long friendship with the current Earl's father, who was known as Porchy by friends, as his title had been Lord Porchester. My father-in-law was first and foremost a friend, and then they shared an interest in racing, a passion for the racehorse and breeding, and taking them to the race course, but also a passion for the countryside. She was deeply rooted in, in the countryside, in the British countryside. She used to come down for the weekends, especially there was, there was one in the, in, in the spring and some other times, and we'd go out onto the stud farm and look at my father's horses, or her horses that happened to be staying up at the stud farm, and then her stud at Pole Hampton over by Kingsclear, and sometimes even with the horses in training. So I, I got to be used to being wandering amongst foals and, and yearlings of um, Her Majesty's and, and, and my father's. It was, it was just the, the way of life at the time. The seventh Earl of Carnarvon was the Queen's racing manager from 1969 until his death in 2001. He spoke about the Queen's racing expertise on BBC South Today in 1990. She's a very good judge of blood stock and knows a lot about pedigrees and a lot about racing, but sadly has insufficient time to give to going racing, but she watches quite a lot on television. First past the post, a length ahead, a magnificent win for the Queen. As a result of the strong friendship, the Queen was the current Earl's godmother. Did Her Majesty ever have any words of advice for you as you were growing up, as, as your godmother? I think only in, 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 the, in that uh, match has always been very good conversationalist with people of all ages, including the young, and, and was always willing to engage in, in something about you know, what you were doing at school, or even if, even if, if you had some kind of views on something. And, 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 and she'd also steer you in a better direction if you thought it, was, it might be going in the wrong way. But, but I, I would think she always had very, very good advice for people, generally. It wasn't just racing that brought the Queen to Highclere. In the 1950s, the Duke of Edinburgh also played in a cricket match here. It was at Highclere Park, Hampshire, in aid of the National Playing Fields Association. Along with her passion for the countryside and for racing, the Earl of Carnarvon remembers that the Queen was a devoted Christian. There's I mean, an Im immense sense of, of wanting to be the, the head of state and be the, the right thing and, and an anchor in the middle of everything, never taking part in politics as a constitutional monarch, but, but, but being the, the steadfast leader um, that people can actually look up to. And he believes the country was lucky to have a monarch who reigned for so long. I think very, very fortunate in, in, in global history to have had one such steadfast leader for quite so, so many years, from the early, early 50s to, to now, is, is quite extraordinary because, because most countries in the world do not have a, a, shall we say, a, a, a leader of great stature of that longevity. Is it a contribution that will really only be recognised properly in years to come? I hope I certainly have recognised it in the time that I've been 
well, since I've been alive, she's been part of everybody's life since they were born and were watching TV and the cycle of the year. And, and again, it's been a privilege and an unexpected honor, if you like, for, for myself to have met her. So I think I've been aware of an extraordinary woman who it's been a privilege to meet. Britannia, Laos and Lucia, the island known as the Helen of the West Indies. And the Countess thinks that strengthening the Commonwealth through a series of overseas trips was the Queen's greatest achievement. The Commonwealth, which goes beyond borders, beyond colour or race, beyond country, just bringing people together, is the most extraordinary legacy and very much that of Her Majesty and, I think, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. It was in the countryside and around horses that the Queen's smile showed how much she was enjoying herself and the pressures of being monarch lifted just for a short time. And the people here at Highclere are proud that this is one of the places she was able to relax. When she came here and whatever the weather, standing in a field with her dogs, she loved working her dogs, those were private moments for her and they were just moments in a slightly different world apart. Precious memories. That was the Countess of Carnarvon finishing that report uh, from Steve Humphrey. I'll be back with you soon with more news and sport, but let's uh, rejoin John in Westminster. Morning to you, John. We've been observing from Salford, the snake seems to be motoring along quite quickly this morning. It is, Nina. I get the impression that the authorities here in London are trying to get as many people through Westminster Hall as they possibly can today. So they're still giving a chance for people to reflect and to pause and to have that time inside. But they're trying to get the, the queue moving because they know that on a Sunday, on a dry day, it's likely to get very, very busy. The queue's likely to get long as the day goes on. And of course, there's only 24 hours now uh, that Westminster Hall will remain open to the public. I just wanted to show you this pile of blankets. We have a, a sort of very effective recycling operation in place here so what happens is that uh, the Salvation Army and various other charities give blankets to people at the back of the queue if they look like they haven't brought enough coats and they're not going to be warm enough in those hours and they can keep warm as they wait through the night and then as they get to this point just before they arrive at the Palace of Westminster they can dump their blankets here and then these are collected and then they go back to the beginning of the queue uh, five or six miles away for anybody who's cold so it's a rather lovely way of really keeping warm if they can. I have to say people seem to be well protected without the blankets this morning. Lots of people in, hello, morning. Uh, lots of people with their um, mittens on and their scarves and their hats, they've come well prepared. Uh, it's not been quite as cold last night as it was uh, the night before, but certainly people don't want to be held up uh, when they're in the darkness overnight. Just thought we should explain, before we have a chat to some people in the queue, a bit about what we can uh, expect over the next uh, 24 hours, because it's going to be uh, a momentous time, and I know lots of people want to, to keep a track of events. So let me just run this through you. Uh, what we know is that the, the Queen's Coffin will lie in state for this, the, the fourth and final day in Westminster Hall, and then there will be a one-minute silence held across the UK at 8 p.m., tonight where people can mark that silence either privately in their own homes of course on the street with their neighbours or at lots of community events as well and vigils that have been organised right across the country. Uh, today as well the King will hold an audience with Prime Minister Liz Truss at Buckingham Palace. We know that he's also uh, going to meet meeting along with the Queen Consort, uh, heads of other states and official overseas guests at the palace uh, who are gathering here in the capital ahead of the funeral tomorrow but let's talk to some of the people who've who've waited overnight hello good morning hello. may we have a chat with you you're live on bbc breakfast can we hold you up for a second i know you've waited all night is that all right tell us your names and where you've come from i'm sheila i'm from blackpool hi sheila i'm becky i'm from blackpool hi well. becky and, and yeah. tell us why did you want to come and key through the night and how's it been been long <laughs> but we've had we met some lovely we're friends on route. yeah but a right good crack along the way haven't yeah we? That's it. Nice atmosphere. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Very good. Really yeah. good atmosphere. Very well. Everyone's got on really well. It's been. You've really come together. Well. No, I've, no, I've just met them on the route. All oh, right. Just walked away and just enjoyed it. 
been superb. Yeah. It is amazing that the new friendships that people are forming. I know. Oh, yeah. Is it surprising you've got a big smile on your face even <laughs> after 12 hours? Of yeah. I'm just delirious now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're nearly there. I mean, you're literally 20 minutes, you'll be inside yeah. Westminster Hall. As you approach that moment, the, the, the reality of, of seeing the coffin, the reason you've come, I guess, the, the, does the mood change a little bit? I think so, yeah. It's the sombre mood then. It's the emotions, isn't it? You've come here to pay your respects yeah. for like 12 hours, and then I think it'd just be the emotion would just... I don't know how it's going to be, but it's just... I don't know. It's just that emotion. Of, why have you come here? You've come here to pay your respects to a lady that's given 70 years great service to our country. Yeah. Just outstanding. And it's, 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 I think it's the least we can do, just to yeah. see the crowds around yeah. here that have done it. I think it'll be emotional when we get inside, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I guess after being up all night and in the cold and in the dark you, you kind of your barriers are down a bit as well aren't you you sort of probably feel a bit more vulnerable yourself than you might normally do yeah are you tired and yeah definitely I feel a bit more surreal now we're getting yeah. closer yeah so when, when you know that you you know she's, she's within touching distance now when it's uh, it's been a long a long time but she she's been such a brilliant person a brilliant brilliant queen to us so we we owe it to her really just to go and say goodbye and you come down from blackpool especially we have yeah yeah and we what, stay we, till monday so till you stay for the Tuesday. funeral you stay for yeah. the funeral yeah yeah, yeah. so we've yeah. got another long night ahead tonight yeah <laughs> haven't you where are you going to go for the funeral we've not had a chance to decide yet no. <laughs> you need to get some sleep have you got a hotel <laughs> have you got somewhere to stay we oh have. thank goodness that you're not in a tent or something no <laughs> all right well look you take care thank yes. you it's nice to see you all thank together you. And I'm sorry to hold you off a bit, but uh, thank you, thank you for your time. Thank Take you. care, bye bye. Um, it is amazing how prepared everybody seems to be to chat. Now and again, somebody's a little shy or says that their English isn't good enough, but uh, pretty much everybody you meet here wants to share their stories, wants to explain why they're here, and just wants to pay tribute to the monarch uh, whose coffin they've come to pay respects at. Uh, Helena Wilkinson is on the Mall at Buckingham Palace, which of course will become the focus of a lot of attention over the next 24 hours as well. And Helena, we've seen so many crowds there over the last week or, or more now. H how are things this morning? Well, you can see it's, it's pretty quiet here this morning outside the palace. Just uh, some people have started to arrive, uh, John, but uh, we will expect, we are expecting, as we have seen here over the past couple of days, tens of thousands of people who have gathered here. This, of course, has been one of the focal points uh, for people. Buckingham Palace, uh, the uh, residence which many people across the world associate with the Queen. And in fact, yesterday, the crowds were so big here that people were uh, queuing around the edge of the palace. So I think we're going to expect a lot of people here today. Um, what uh, we can expect in terms of the timetable for the king he has got another busy day today later on here at buckingham palace the king will be hosting a formal state reception here and that is for heads of state and official uh, overseas guests he will be joined by his wife camilla the queen consort and it will be the first opportunity that those guests who will be attending the queen's funeral tomorrow will be able to gather together in one place we understand that diplomacy politics that will of course be put to one side though for the moment while the official mourning period uh, continues and until after the funeral um, we know of course now that president biden joe biden the u.s president arrived at stansted airport last night we are showing you those pictures now you can see uh, president biden with his wife jill uh, coming off uh, Air Force One, arriving at Stansted Airport, and he will uh, be meeting the King a bit later on. We expect uh, him and his wife to be at that state reception here at the palace later. And the guests will be given the opportunity, including President Biden, to sign an official book of condolence at Lancaster House, not too far away from where we are, and also, if they wish, uh, they will be able to uh, pay their respects in Westminster Hall to see the Queen lying in state. So another busy day for the King. We're expecting, as I say, big crowds here outside the palace. And I think for the crowds, they will be hoping that they may see a member of the royal family uh, today, as we have seen over the past few days, uh, the King, 
members of the royal family have very much wanted to meet all of those people uh, that have been here where you are john uh, to thank them and it's very clear that the royal family are very grateful and touched by the outpouring of support from so many people not just in this country but across the world john yeah, Helena, thank you very much indeed. Thanking seems to be a common theme, doesn't it? That the public thanking the monarch and paying tribute to her, and then in turn the royal family thanking the public for, for turning out and doing this. Hello, good morning. You're live on BBC Breakfast. Can we just delay you for one second? Do you okay. mind? Is that just, just to tell us how it's been and, and why you've come. Uh, well, we've come to pay our respects, but it has been gruelling. It's been tough. Gruelling, yeah. yeah. We, we uh, left the park at half past seven, was it, last night? Yeah, yeah, but it's been tough, but it's, it's worth it. Nearly 12 hours. Yes. Yeah, it's been worth it though. We wanted to all pay our respects as a family and just um, really sad that she's not with us anymore. Can you say it's been tough? What, what's been the toughest bit of the last 12 hours away? Um, I think just sort of starting, stopping and through yeah, the night. A lot, lot of stopping where it's uh, all packed up, uh, wherever it goes down to narrow parts. So that's that's been hard. Everyone's been sitting on the floor or sitting on benches, but... Uh, we're there now. We had naps on the way. So we did. Was... <laughs> How do you nap on the way? Are you walking? I just kind of sat and just sort of... Um, really? Yeah, mate, we both managed to nap a little bit, Was sat it? down. That is, it, that is good napping. I'm jealous of that. I've been napping, walking, believe it or not. <laughs> what? How do you manage that? I have. I can do that. I've got a photographic evidence. <laughs> napping and walking? Yeah, I fell asleep at the Killers concert the other week. <laughs> I did. Okay, I think okay, we've got a story yeah. with you. This is a remarkable <laughs> talent. I've never heard of this before. I'm worried about you losing your cue, having yeah. talked about how stopping and starting. <laughs> Take care. Thank you very Thanks much. So bye much. bye. He's awake and walking at the moment. Have a morning. Okay. Then. Morning. Morning. <laughs> filming us. Filming you. Good morning. Um, you know, we were talking about people who've come to London from all over the country, but on breakfast we also wanted to get a sense of how people across the country who can't make it to the capital have been marking uh, this extraordinary time in our history and how people around the country are paying respect to the Queen. And Coletta Smith and David Wallace Lockhart have uh, got in the car and they've been driving to different communities to find out what the mood is and what the anticipation is ahead of tomorrow. Let's hear from them. Buckle down and we'll head off on our grand tour. Jade, hi. Travelling across the north of England yesterday, the only queue we encountered was at the bar. Yeah, of course you can. But people are marking this weekend in weird and wonderful ways. Football match on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you run the park run here in Saltair? I do. We met runners and worship leaders. This is the Grand Hall at Victoria Mill. We heard about plans for food banks, festivals and football matches. There's some view. This morning, I'm behind the wheel as we leave Lancashire and head south. First stop, Cheshire. Here go. And it's Ellesmere Port. See you in a bit. See you soon. <laughs> I'm meeting the delightful Andrew and his family. Hey! I'll show you. He's made and sent so many cards to the Queen over the last few years that they practically became pen pals. This one's just like a letter. The Queen was glad to learn that you like to help others and to know that you and your brother and sister, Aaron and Amelia, have Excuse raised money me. Bless you, Thank to you. support children's charities. I write, um, happy Christmas or how much we raised or, or when it's her birthday or when Prince Philip died. You, sent, you wrote a yeah. card and sent it? Yeah, or her 70 years on the throne. That's a really lovely idea. Yeah. Who's next then? Who are you writing to next? Good luck for Prince Charles for being king. Yeah. And and I'll do a happy Christmas one to Prince William. On Monday, which is going to be the Queen's funeral, do you think you'll be watching that or what are your plans as a family? Um, we're hopefully going to watch Pirates of Caribbean 4 and 5. That is a great idea. <laughs> Down at the waterfront, I want to find out what people have planned for the funeral tomorrow. Uh, it's uh, videos and it's, if you pop down, it's there. It's not long before I bump into YouTuber Xander and his dad. How's Xander planning to spend his bank holiday? Probably doing stuff on YouTube, to be honest. Maybe... Maybe occasionally popping downstairs to have a looking at the TV, but yeah, pretty much just YouTube. Do you have a television? Turns out we're not the only ones travelling around at the moment. Loris has come over from New Zealand for a canal barge holiday. 
I think it's a very important moment in history, isn't it? It's, it's uh, possibly not something that we'll experience again in our lifetime. And you'll potentially find somewhere for the funeral tomorrow, is that right? That's what our hope is, yes. We're hoping to be back in Chester where we can get a good signal and, and watch it on, on television. The Kiwi flag is at half-mast for the Queen. As we get back on the road, this time heading for Wales. So it's, it's us officially entering Conway, yeah. I've got the best deal this afternoon. A proper day out at the seaside. And here in Clandidno, the pier is packed. But it'll be a different scene tomorrow as the whole thing will be closed off. Bank holiday is usually the busiest uh, throughout the year for us, um, but we just thought we made the decision before it'd be right in the uh, eyes of the public as well. Um, also, all our staff, all our team, they want to spend the day remembering. You've never had any royals? No, not yet. In, not yet. <laughs> on this particular wheel? Not yet, no. <laughs> but you're hopefully, hoping, yeah. hopefully, soon. <laughs> hopefully, they'll come down. So, you run the pier here, but you're, you're not a fan of heights. I'm not, no. This is the second time uh, I've been on it. Um, my colleague who, who runs the wheel, he does on purpose, stops it right at the top for us, he knows full well I'm scared of ice. So. <laughs> I'm dropping in on Alicia. Alicia, hi. hi. I'm David. Lovely nice to meet, to meet you. you. She's an artist who posts her work on TikTok. Her recent painting of the Queen has around two and a half million views. I spent ages and, you know, many hours looking at, um, her face and trying to, you know, work out her features and everything. So, yeah, I was really upset. Um, so I sort of felt like I knew her. Sometimes being far away doesn't mean you can't feel close to someone. Everywhere we've been on this road trip has felt very far from London and it's felt very far from those official events. But still so many people wanting to mark this weekend somehow. And we've ended up in a land that's built around the holiday industry. But this bank holiday weekend looks like no other. Yeah. Should we start thinking about heading back? I'm not going anywhere until I finish this ice cream and devour the flake. That's a good point. <laughs> David and Coletta making the most of their journey there. Uh, we're here just outside the Palace of Westminster as people make their final approach into Westminster Hall. Good morning to you. Hello there, we're from the BBC, from BBC News, you're live on BBC. Yeah, Can we just ask why you've come, why did you want to pay tribute to the Queen? Just, uh, just thought I needed to do it and that was all to it. You needed to do it? Yeah. Yes. Where have you come from? From Liverpool. From Liverpool? Yes. And you've been up all night? Yes, from 8 o'clock. So. How are you feeling? Tired, but glad I'm nearly there. You're nearly there, how are the feet? Sore. <laughs> yeah, I bet. People's back right. sore, knees sore, feet sore. But thank you very much indeed, sir. Yeah, but they're, they're almost there. Uh, and they've had a slightly warmer night than people did yesterday because uh, it's slightly milder. Uh, Chris has the weather for London and for the rest of the UK. Morning, Chris. Thank you, Chris. We will be back with John and the team in London shortly, speaking with those in the queue and, of course, looking ahead to tomorrow's funeral. But for now, let's take a look at the day's other news. Returning now to our reflections on the Queen from across the UK. And when news of the Queen's death broke last week, there was one striking image in particular that was then broadcast around the world. It was a portrait of the monarch painted by the artist Richard Stone. And he's been speaking with our reporter, Richard Daniel. It was an image seen around the world when the Queen's death was announced last week. A portrait completed 30 years ago by the Essex artist Richard Stone. This is the very first sketch um, for the portrait that I'd been commissioned to paint of the Queen. The very first sitting when I was setting out to capture not just a likeness but something in her face that reflected her personality. A year later this life-size head study was published with the Queen's approval but some newspapers were scathing. I was absolutely mortified and immediately phoned Buckingham Palace um, feeling that I'd really let the Queen down but I was reassured that 
everything was just fine. And so my right hand remained steady and I continued with the work. After nine more sittings, the portrait, commissioned by the Borough of Colchester, was unveiled at the National Portrait Gallery. It was a labour of love. Um, I enjoyed every single second of agonising over that picture. I so wanted to get it right. I mean, it was a huge privilege to spend so much time with the Queen, and she was terribly generous with her time. We all knew the Queen was... 96, and getting increasingly frail. But her passing was, was, was so quick, none of us were prepared for that. And then coupled with the fact that it was my portrait that was being broadcast and transmitted around the world, it was a goosebump moment. Um, I'm still trying to come to terms with it. I can't quite believe that we now have a king. He painted his first royal portrait, aged just 21, and it's his dearest wish that one day he might be asked to paint the king. I'd love to. I've so enjoyed my sittings with him in the past. Um, he's a truly remarkable man. Um, the sittings with him have been a great pleasure because we've just talked about art. And if that opportunity ever arose, I'd love to accept the challenge. Hello there, good morning. Welcome to breakfast with me, John Kay, in Westminster, where the Queen's body lies in state for a fourth full day. And Nina is in the studio in Salford. Here are our headlines at seven o'clock. And the Queen's consort pays tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile, you know, that smile is unforgettable. Thousands continue to pay their respects as the Queen's body lies in state for another 24 hours. Tomorrow's funeral will be shown on big screens and in cinemas across the UK. The US President Joe Biden has arrived in the UK ahead of the Queen's funeral. He will meet King Charles along with other world leaders at Buckingham Palace later on. Away from Westminster, today's other headlines. The man's been charged with attempted murder after two police officers were stabbed in London's Leicester Square. And in sport, Sun Hyung Min scores a stunning 13-minute hat-trick as Tottenham continue their unbeaten run in the Premier League. Good morning, everybody. Sunday, the 18th of September. You're watching BBC Breakfast from Westminster, uh, where the queue continues. People waiting in their thousands through the night again to pay their respects to the Queen. Today is the last full day uh, that Her Majesty will lie in state inside the hall. And you can see that people are waiting uh, inside and outside. That queue outside snaking around uh, for, for mile after mile and it's expected to get even longer in the hours ahead. Well, meanwhile, the Queen Consort Camilla has recorded a televised tribute in which she praised Elizabeth II for carving her own role in a male-dominated world. She has been part of our lives forever. I'm 75 now and I, I can't remember anybody except the Queen being there. It must have been so difficult for her being a solitary woman. There weren't women prime ministers or women presidents. Um, she was the only one, so I think she carved her own role. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile. You know, that smile is unforgettable. That smile remembered by uh, the new Queen Consort, but also by so many people here uh, in the queue as they approach Westminster Hall. That's the scene live uh, just where we are this morning. This is the final stage of that wait. So the people you're seeing there uh, who are getting close, they've been waiting through the night uh, for 12, 13 hours in the darkness. 
and now it's warming up a little bit that the sun is up and uh, these people only have like 20 minutes or half an hour left to wait before they get inside the palace of westminster but they've still got to go through security they've got to go through those checks uh, but they have told us one after another in their thousands again this morning that they have no complaints despite the pain in their backs and their knees and their feet they wouldn't have had it any other way they wanted uh, to be here they felt a need to be here and we're going to speak to some of them on breakfast uh, this morning but as well as members of the public of course there are thousands of dignitaries uh, state leaders from around the world who are arriving in the uk including the us president joe biden who he arrived uh, here overnight ahead of the Queen's funeral tomorrow morning. Uh, dignitaries, uh, other world leaders arriving all the time to attend that service. Meanwhile, those uh, members of the public who want to pay their respects here at Westminster Hall being warned that there is now a 12 hour wait and it could get even longer in the hours ahead, as Duncan Kennedy reports. Two countries united by one grief. President Biden landing last night at Stansted with the First Lady ahead of tomorrow's funeral. He's one of around 500 heads of state and dignitaries taking part. From presidents who cross oceans to people who line rivers, Mr. Biden arrives in a capital whose center has been transformed. Keep on going, guys, keep on going. At its heart, a queue whose length is measured in hours, not yards. Some even have proof. I've been here for eight hours and 14 seconds. Uh, 14 minutes. <laughs> I've, that's how long I've been here for. At times, the queue has been 10 miles long. For some, the walking brings weariness <laughs> and the need to loosen the limbs. Not far behind them, someone honoured by the Queen, who knows all about pace and perseverance. In my head, I was like, I have to join this queue. So I stopped all my plans the weekend, got on the train this morning, uh, met some friends to change my clothes, and here I am. The queue's tempo has varied, but has consistently remained patient and determined. To many here, the Queen is not a, but the national treasure. She's given us so much. She's given us her whole life. And I just rang Mum and I said, I think we just need to go. What does she mean to you, the Queen? I think quite a lot, because obviously we've all grown up with her being obviously our Queen and she's had such an impact on all our lives. I think she means quite a lot to all of us. I was a guardsman myself, um, working outside Buckingham Palace and, and the Tower and Windsor Castle. Um, I feel quite a, a close uh, affinity with the royal family. Um, especially the Queen. Um, I've met her on occasions um, and I just think it's my duty to come down and, and show my respects. When this queue does finally close and the last person files past the Queen's coffin sometime early tomorrow morning, it will mark the end of an unprecedented act of collective tribute. Attention will then move from Westminster Hall to Westminster Abbey for the funeral. Last night inside Westminster Hall, standing sentinel to their beloved grandmother, the Queen's eight grandchildren, posted to all sides of the plinth. A symmetrical display of her extended family's devotion. Flowing around them, those who've come to pay respects to a long royal life, bookended by coronation and commemoration. Westminster Hall carrying the solemnity of a cathedral amid the silence of a library. The Prime Minister of Australia, Your Majesty. At Buckingham Palace, King Charles has been meeting some of the Commonwealth leaders who've arrived for the funeral. They included the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. He's previously declared himself a Republican, but said such matters were for another time. At Windsor Castle, they've been moving tens of thousands of flowers from well-wishers inside the castle grounds, ready for the burial ceremony, with the blooms all facing towards Her Majesty's beloved home. Tonight at 8pm, the country will hold a national moment of reflection for one minute, to stop and think about the life and legacy of the Queen. It comes ahead of tomorrow's funeral, a momentous occasion of state, a family farewell, 
and a full stop moment in this nation's history. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News. We're just after seven o'clock this Sunday morning. And that's the view across the bridge. You can see people queuing there as they approach the Palace of Westminster. And inside Westminster Hall, still they come in their thousands to file past the coffin, one in turn. These people have been up all night, queuing for 12, 13, 14 hours in the cold and in the darkness. And when they get inside the hall, it's only for a few seconds. You can see the authorities keen to give people a chance to spend their time there, but also to keep the queue moving because so many people still joining miles further back. Today is the fourth and final full day that the Queen's coffin will lie inside Westminster Hall here. Uh, it was announced last night that the accessible queue for people with disabilities has already been permanently closed to new entrance uh, after it reached full capacity. Uh, visitors in the main queue here, I say it, it, it's moving steadily this morning, uh, but people are being warned if they're just joining that the wait time is currently about 14 hours and it could get much, much longer as the day goes on because it's the final full day, it is a Sunday, so for many people they're not working. And so uh, as I arrived here in the capital last night from Bristol on the train, there were still loads of people arriving at Paddington from uh, west of England, from the southwest of England, bringing flowers, heading here and determined to, to be part of this whole experience to pay their respect. Our reporter Lauren Moss is at the back of the queue so she's uh, what six or seven miles at least from us here at Westminster this morning and Lauren this Sunday morning people still joining Good morning, John. Yes, indeed, they are. Like you say, it's the, the fourth and final day, the last chance really for people to come and pay their respects to the Queen and try and uh, reach Westminster Hall uh, near where you are. And I can tell you, we're speaking to the stewards this morning, and they say it's much busier today at this time than it was this time yesterday. When people are coming in through the gates, not only are they being given their wristbands, they're being given blankets too, prepared uh, for all weathers, although hopefully it will start to warm up as we go through the day. And uh, here at the the, the start of the Southern Park here. I'm joined by a couple of families here, host of age groups. I'm just going to have a chat to them about why they've decided to come down. Tiffany, you're here with your two twin daughters. Why was it so important for you to, to make the journey here? Well, we tried to come on Friday and got stuck. My husband got in and said it was such a special experience that we wanted to come too. So we saw the flowers on Friday and went to the palace. We just missed the king as he left the vigil going down the mall. So we're here to try again and we really just want to be part of this incredible piece of history to have those memories for the children. And what do you both think about the, the long day you've got ahead of you? How are you prepared? Uh, we need to keep up our stamina, <laughs> um, but enjoy it in the sights later on. What about you? What will it mean to see the, the Queen in Westminster Hall? What do you think about it? I think it's very important for everyone at this time. Thank you very much. Well, I hope the queue goes well for you. Thank you. And uh, we'll just uh, nip round here and speak to Mum first. Over here, what's your name? Uh, my name is Binuta. And you're here with uh, your, your son and daughter, nine and 12 years old. Yeah. When was it you decided to come and join the queue? Uh, it was the first of the day when I heard the news and I'm really excited to come here. To, I'm privileged to be here. And what do you think about being part of this? I mean, I think it's a one-in-a-lifetime experience, obviously, as this will never happen in history again so you know I'm very excited to be here but obviously it's still a really sad uh, period as the Queen has just passed so and I've been seeing a lot of families uh, coming down uh, do you know many of your friends that are making making this journey no I don't think so so you'll, you'll have something to, to tell them about heading back to, to school on Tuesday yeah 
Thank you very much. Well, I hope that the queue go goes well for you. Let's head over here. As you can see, this is the, the last point uh, in the park where there, they'll be uh, crossing over the road uh, towards Bermondsey, where I had a wander down before. There are some residents that have gone out there with tables and they're, they're giving out tea and coffee and, uh, and cans of fizzy drinks and snacks to people, getting them ready at the start of the journey. But like you say, it could be 12 to 14 hours uh, to walk to where you are, John, from here. So it's going to be a long day ahead. And I think everyone's just going to be watching closely to see if and when the queuing time will be stopped because of course uh, those that are organizing this and all of the stewards that are greeting people today want to make sure that anyone who does arrive here is able to get through all those uh, that long journey that 10 mile journey to Westminster Hall before it closes officially at 6 30 tomorrow morning yeah, Lauren, thank you very much indeed for now. Just watching those pictures, you can see how much busier it's getting, even compared with an hour ago. Uh, Charlotte Gallagher's here with us outside Westminster Hall. It's at the, the, the end of the queue. These people just about to get in. Um, I guess at some point in the hours ahead, the authorities are going to have to explain how they will end the queue, because in 24 hours' time, Westminster Hall will be closed, and so they need to advise people when, when will be the cut-off point. At some point, they are going to have to close the queue. So everyone in the queue gets the chance to see the Queen lying in state. The last thing people want is people queuing for 12, 14 hours, getting here and it's closed. That would be awful. So the government are going to announce at some point the queue will be closed. Closes at, the lying in state closes at 6.30. So if people are queuing tomorrow for morning, to, tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. So if people are queuing for 12, 14 hours, we anticipate sometime this evening, sometime this afternoon, the queue will have to be closed. So I would say if you do want to come down, and you want to see the Queen lying in state, it's probably best to do it sooner rather than later. There's still time this morning to join the queue, but if you leave it till later this afternoon, later this evening, there is a chance that you might miss out. And we've already seen that uh, people with uh, mobility issues, disabilities, uh, the accessible queue has, has closed permanently already. Yes, and lots of people were upset by that, saying they hadn't had a chance to come down yet, they wanted to join that queue, because unfortunately they can't join the main queue. So they were very, very disappointed. What I would say, I know a lot of people have been saying there's a lot of waste going on, people carrying food, there's blankets being given out. The blankets are being washed and they're being redonated or given to people at the back of the queue who need them. All food that isn't opened is being taken by the scouts and is being distributed to charities like food banks and homeless shelters. Things aren't just going in the bin because I've noticed a lot of people saying on Twitter, for example, things are being wasted. They're not. Things are being given out to people who need them. So please don't worry about that. That's what's going on today. Oh, that's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. And it's also lovely to see people sharing stuff. I've seen people sharing snacks and sharing, you know, flasks of coffee and that kind of thing, isn't it? It's, uh, there's a lot of sharing going on here. Even Deckham, David Beckham, didn't he? He got the donuts out and was sharing them with people. Imagine sharing a donut with David Beckham. You're standing next to David Beckham for 12 Imagine hours. Imagine David Beckham even eating donuts. Yeah, you wouldn't think nah. he would, would you? That's Too what he was healthy. Them. Doesn't yeah. touch them. Uh, Charlotte, thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's have a look at what uh, you need to know about watching the funeral tomorrow, because lots of people want to know exactly what the uh, timings are going to be. Uh, the details have now been released. So the state funeral begins at exactly 11 o'clock in Westminster Abbey. That will be broadcast on TV, of course, uh, on BBC One, on ITV and Sky, uh, not just at 11 o'clock. Uh, breakfast, we'll be previewing it in the morning and then there will be full coverage of the preparations as well. For those who want to be here in person, there will be special viewing places along the route of the funeral procession. Uh, that will be here in London and also in Windsor because the public procession uh, in London will be followed uh, by that private service at Windsor Castle. Uh, in London, uh, that procession will be between Westminster Abbey after the service and Wellington Arch, while the Windsor procession will travel along the long walk before going into the castle for that private ceremony. There will also be big screens up and 125 cinemas around the UK will also be showing those services. So you can follow all these events and developments uh, leading up to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth on the BBC News website and on the iPlayer and that full interview uh, with uh, Camilla Queen Consort will be on BBC One tonight uh, just before the two minute silence, national silence at eight o'clock tonight. Uh, we'll be hearing from some people in the queue in a few minutes time. But first, let's return to Nina, who's in the studio. Hi, Nina. 
Thank you, John. Looking forward to rejoining you soon. Um, we've been meeting all of this week some of those who've been uh, invited to the Queen's funeral. And among the dignitaries um, who have been invited, there will also be a number of people who met the Queen through their community work, uh, including Cathy Cowell, the chair of Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust and Deputy Lieutenant of Cheshire. She joins me now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Dear. How and when did you find out? Uh, last Saturday by email. Through email? Yes, what did it yes. say? It just said um, the invitation came and, and I emailed back and said I'd be honoured and privileged to be in, the, in Westminster Abbey. And then presumably you got on the phone to share the news? <laughs> um, actually I didn't because I needed to make sure it was absolutely all organised. I, mean, I like things to be dotted so yes, so then I did share the news and of course it's a huge honour for the to represent the NHS of, of Manchester in Westminster Abbey and the Queen was such a huge supporter wasn't she of the NHS and I don't think that was ever demonstrated more this year when she gave us the George Cross. Absolutely. So it'll be a huge honour to be In there. the wake of COVID. Yeah. Tell me about your experiences of the Queen and the NHS. So, so the Queen visited Royal Manchester Children's Hospital in 2017 in the wake of the Manchester Arena attack. And, and it was an amazing visit because she brought with her that day a real sense of comfort and it was a real morale boost for the, uh, the patients, their families, staff and our volunteers. And it was a really terrible time, so she really lifted the morale of everybody that day. I would imagine as well, three days after something so traumatic happening, mm -hmm. the state that the children are in, the state that the staff are in, under a lot of pressure, very difficult, that's not an easy environment to walk into is it for her no and she was truly amazing on the morning of her visit i did a quick whip around the wards to say yeah the queen is coming and we had one young lady one young patient and since she'd been admitted she was really difficult to engage you know she was really withdrawn so i went into her room and said yeah the, the queen is coming can i bring her in to see you and um we'd had no reaction from this young lady at all and suddenly you know her eyes lit up and she said the queen so i said yeah can i bring her in and she said yeah so in the blink of an eye she turned to her relative that was with her and said quick pass me my makeup bag i need a clean lady i need to do my hair and this is a young girl who hadn't sat up since she'd been admitted so that was the effect the queen had on that young lady and and i then went across the corridor to the next ward and by then the bush telegraph had beaten me too i hadn't made the ward was buzzing they knew the queen was coming i was talking to one of the young girls and her mum was next to her and her mum had been injured in the the attack as well and then um, she said to me but I've had the, the Queen's coming at 12 o'clock and said, yeah, I think, that, I think that's the timing. She said, but I'm going to theatre. If you tell them not to take me, they'll let me stay. <laughs> they went, mm, theatre <laughs> takes priority. <laughs> mm, oh, you definitely need to have your, your wounds dressed, so yeah. I'm sorry if they come for you, you need to go. So um, she accepted that, but so when the Queen ran, we were on the ward and, and we got to this point, and as I drew the curtains back, of course her bed was empty and she'd gone to theatre, but her mum was there. So so I turned to the Queen and said, Mom, yeah, to be so disappointed to have missed you. She so wanted to meet you. Uh, but this is her mum who was in the the Queen went on to talk to her mum. And I was on the ward a few days later and this little, this young girl, she was beside herself with joy. She'd had a personal letter from the Queen saying how disappointed she was not to meet her. And that was the difference the Queen made, the impact she had. It just shows the extent to which she was listening as well. Yes. She wasn't just going through the motions. Absolutely. And that was really apparent when she met our staff. So she didn't not only meet the staff from the hospital, but all those emergency services that had attended on the night. And, and what standing next to what was so apparent was she just asked a question and she listened so intently. And actually, it was almost a cathartic process for those people who talked to her that day. She was so very special that day. And you're right, it was so difficult to walk into. And we were told to keep it low key. By the time How you meant to do <laughs> yeah. that, though. Well, if you look at the footage from her leaving the hospital afterwards, the crowds were everywhere and she got around and cheer and that. But it was the difference she made. How much of a difference does it make in a situation like that when presumably your staff have been working round the clock, your patients have been through a nasty trauma? Um, uh, it's hard to remember back, but we'd never come across anything like this before mm. in Manchester. And we suddenly realised the impact of having to take our patients 
to theatre several times, you know, back and back to theatre. And the staff were really tired and it just lifted them and actually gave them the impetus. And she brought with her that strength and comfort and that, that she gave us the belief that you can carry on and do this. Which is what she did for decades, Absolutely. wasn't it? Um, finally, mm -hmm. you wouldn't share the news until you'd prepared all the logistics. Have you got your outfit sorted? Have you got the train booked? Everything. The hat, the gloves, <laughs> everything. Quick phone call to you know, a, a parlour. You know, is it hats? Yes, it's hats. So got the hats, train booked, hotel booked and, and everything ready to go. And no plus ones allowed, are they? No, so. but I have an absolutely fabulous husband who hold the coat outside and wait for oh, me. Oh, bless him. <laughs> yeah. And it will be a sombre occasion, but it as will. you were saying earlier, it will be a cause to celebrate what was a life well lived. Oh, a huge moment to reflect mm. on that white life, on that life well lived, but also to celebrate the difference the Queen made. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing your memories. Amazing. Thanks, Cathy. Thank you, Nina. And uh, enjoy tomorrow. Oh, it'll be very, very special, very special a moment day. in history. It will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back with John and those waiting patiently in the queue throughout the morning. But for now, at 24 minutes past seven, let's check in with the day's other news. Thanks. It is 27 minutes past seven and Sunday with Laura Koonsberg follows breakfast this morning. Morning to you, Laura. What can we expect today? Good morning, Nina. Well, as you'd expect, we are going to be spending a lot of time this morning talking about that extraordinary event that we're all going to witness tomorrow, Her Late Majesty's State Funeral. And we'll be talking to some of the people who've been involved in the planning of that over many years. The former Archbishop of York, John Sentamu, will be with me. The Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hoyle, who's been one of the people involved in all the pomp and ceremony this week. But we'll also be hearing from two of the world leaders who've flown into the UK to attend the state funeral. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern will be here live with us in the studio. And we've also been speaking to Bangladesh's Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, who's reflected on the role of the Commonwealth right across the world and the Queen's long relationship with so many world leaders. So a huge amount to talk about at what's an extraordinary moment for us all be really interesting to get that global perspective. Laura, thank you. It's coming up to half past seven. Let's go back to join John in Westminster. He's with those waiting patiently in the queue. Morning, John. Hey, Nina. I know a lot of people have been worried about waste with the queue, uh, especially blankets potentially being thrown away. Well, let me reassure you, uh, these are some of the blankets that have been given out to people to keep them warm overnight if they've been waiting in the cold. And when they get to this point at the end of the queue, just before they enter Westminster Hall, uh, they leave them here. They're then going to be washed and either they go back to the people who are starting their queue experience. Uh, they're taken around to the beginning of the queue or the end of the queue. We can't remember whether it's the beginning or the end. And then as for food, if people have still got f sealed food, which they can't take inside the Palace of Westminster, then scouts groups are here and they are collecting it from people. They're taking it away and they're putting it into storage so that uh, people can go to food banks or to homeless charities in London and can be passed on that way. So the authority is saying everything's been thought about. They're trying to make sure uh, that there is as much uh, saved and passed on and shared uh, as possibly can happen. But let's talk to some people who are, who are in the queue and hopefully not too cold this morning. 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 Good morning. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Not too bad, surprisingly. OK, surprisingly. Surpri well, I know we, start, we started at nine o'clock and um, we met in the queue, obviously, like everybody else. And uh, now we're here. So it's been really good. Tell us about your medals. My medals. Oh, just on. I, yeah, well, I used to be a police officer 30 years in Hampshire, Constabulary. So it um, means a lot to come here. I didn't think it would affect me as much as it has done, but uh, I've actually been really upset all week. So... Um, yeah, this is the final part, so really pleased to be here. And how are you feeling as, as you get well, to that final part, as you approach yeah, well, that moment? Yeah, it does, very emotional. It is, you don't realise how, how, it, how it affects you. And um, yeah, you know, I'm pleased we're here, really. Yeah. So, Can I ask you yeah. guys as well, where, where have you come from? Yes, well, Sarah and I have known each other a long time, we come from Hampshire. And I came because my mother and I would have come together, but my mother died last year, so... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, very emotional. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many people who triggered who've by it. Yeah, got those kind of personal Absolutely. connections and yeah. want to share going back generations. Absolutely, yeah. 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 How are you feeling? Okay. Yeah, a bit, bit choked up by it all. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll let you. We'll yeah, let you wait thank on. You. Thank you very much indeed. Can I chat to you as well? You're on busy breakfast. Hello, Hi, yeah. Yeah. I'm Alan from Chesham in Buckinghamshire. So, uh, um, I only met uh, Karen and uh, 
Sorry, Karen's here. I'm here. <laughs> Sarah's here. Twelve hours. You've forgotten their names already. I know. I know. It's so shocking. Yes. Yeah, so uh, no sleep. That's <laughs> what that, that I'm is. Sure. So, uh, How are you yeah. feeling? Are you okay? I, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. yeah, yeah. Not too, not too bad. So uh, I thought it was important to come. Um, nobody else in my family was able to make it, and my mum especially would have liked to have been here. So, so you're um, doing... I thought I'd come along and. For the family, yeah, effectively. But I think it's the end of an era, so I think it was yeah. important to come. So. Yeah. And can I ask you as well about about Her Majesty and and why you were motivated to come and remember um, the Queen? I've always kind of followed the royal family, um, especially kind of you know Diana and uh, William and Harry, um, and say also the Queen as well. I've always kind of you know read everything, virtually yeah. watched all the TV programs and. I'd, it really kind of did hit me. Um, I was watching the, the TV on the Thursday and kind of listening to all the reports and as soon as you kind of hear that there's an announcement from the palace, you know it's serious. Um, and so I, I knew kind of what to expect, but it really did hit me and I'd, I was quite upset. Yeah. So And I'd been thinking about it on and off for the last couple of days. I did come up. Uh, the day after on the Friday, uh, lay some flowers at Buckingham Palace, um, and then obviously I didn't. I came up on my own then, and then there was kind of nobody to come with me now. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go on my own. So you've been um, on your own. Yes. But you've made new friends. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so Sarah, Caroline, and Alan. So just kind of. Names, right? She I got the names know. right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to swap addresses and keep in yes, touch. We've got a WhatsApp yes, group. We've got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got a WhatsApp group already. No, 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 no exchange photographs. Yeah. And everything, so. Christmas yeah. together. Oh, well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Lovely who knows? to meet you. Thank yes, you very much indeed. Very Those medals are looking fantastic. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you take care. Thank you. John K. Yeah, correct. You're on BBC Breakfast. How are you? Very well. Very well. Very tired. What a great experience this has been. Explain why you were motivated to come. Do you know what? I've been thinking about this um, for a while. It's because the Queen has been with us, well, for my entire life, and you feel a connection with the Queen. And you just want to pay your respects. Yeah. That's, all, that's, that's all it is. But we've walked miles and miles, hours and hours. But it's been great, hasn't it? It's been really great. Um, <laughs> Can't wait to get in there to see the Queen. I'm tired, but it's been a great experience. Thank you for letting us stop you. How are your feet all right? No, very <laughs> sore. Okay, well, hopefully, nice to see you. Been a bath within a couple of hours. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so many people here waiting uh, to go inside. Let me just talk you through what's going to happen in the hours ahead because uh, the coffin will remain inside Westminster Hall uh, for the next, well now uh, 24 hours time it's going to be closed to the public, uh, it'll be closing to the public at 6.30 so this is the, the fourth and final day of that. Uh, tonight there will be a one minute silence is going to be held across the UK, that will be at exactly 8 o'clock and people will be marking that either privately at home, uh, on the street with neighbours or community events, uh, vigils. It will be full coverage here on the BBC. Uh, the Queen will hold an audience with Prime Minister Liz Truss at Buckingham Palace today. And the King and Queen Consort will also be meeting heads of state and uh, some of the overseas official guests at the palace as well, who are gathering here. We've seen Joe Biden uh, and his wife Jill arriving in the UK uh, last night. Uh, they are already here. You OK? Somebody dropped something. I thought somebody had fallen over, but we're all right. Um, uh, we're talking about Buckingham Palace. Uh, Helena Wilkinson is there outside the palace. And uh, Helena, not as many crowds there at the moment, but that's going to be the focus of, of the King's Day, all those important meetings ahead. Yes, another a very busy day, John, for the King. Um, yes, it's pretty quiet here at the, at the moment this morning. We have seen some people um, coming up to the gates at Buckingham Palace, quietly standing, others uh, in groups taking photographs. Um, we've seen a number of police officers move around behind us, so they're clearly getting ready for another uh, day where they expect, once again, tens of thousands of people. And don't forget, here is where the crowds here have seen uh, the King going 
in and out from Clarence House. So perhaps they might be hoping they will see the king a bit later on today. But the king has a number of formal events uh, later. As you mentioned, he has an audience with the Prime Minister Liz Truss. And then later on, the focus really will be here at Buckingham Palace. There will be that formal state reception uh, at the funeral tomorrow. 2,000 guests and of those, 500 will be um, heads of state and also foreign dignitaries. So here at the palace, the king will host that event uh, reception later on today. And it will be the only opportunity really where all of those heads of states will be able to gather together. Uh, now we understand that they will pause uh, diplomacy, pause politics uh, due to that period of mourning. Th that, those discussions will take place after the funeral. Um, you've mentioned uh, during the programme, of course, that the US President Joe Biden arrived here in the UK last night. We're just showing you uh, the pictures there of uh, Mr Biden coming off Air Force One with his wife, Jill. Uh, they arrived at Stansted Airport last night. Um, and today, uh, President Biden is expected to sign an official book of condolence uh, 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 Lancaster House, which is not too far away from where we are. Um, those who are attending uh, the funeral tomorrow are also going to be given the opportunity, if they wish, to uh, go to Westminster Hall to pay their respects to see uh, the Queen line in state. And they will also, as uh, we expect President Biden to do a bit later on, uh, to sign that official book of condolence. So today, John, really is uh, about uh, all of those uh, people from abroad, uh, world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, dignitaries, also members of the royal families from Europe as well who will be attending uh, the Queen's funeral tomorrow. We will see them arriving here in London. Uh, some, of course, have or arrived already, uh, but also here at the palace, a, a lot of uh, people will be coming in and out of the palace, no doubt. The crowds will again be building a bit later on here this morning, expecting tens of thousands of people. And in fact, there are some people, John, already camping uh, not too far from the palace. The devoted, dedicated royal supporters, they want to be here for Monday and they have tried to get the best space that they can because, again, this will be one of the focus points uh, tomorrow. Um, so, again, expecting lots of people here a bit later on. Indeed. Helena at Buckingham Palace, thank you very much indeed. Uh, just like those uh, sig uh, civil dignitaries and, and heads of state who are gathering at the palace have come from all over the world. People here in the queue as well from from all over the globe who, who've descended on London. Uh, some people have travelled thousands and thousands of miles uh, to wait in line overnight and to go into Westminster Hall to pay their respects. Uh, the people with here are just... Uh, a few minutes now for, from getting to that point, entering the hall, uh, and you can feel the mood is is very sombre as people await. Should we just have a chat? Hello there, good morning hello. from BBC Breakfast. You're live on TV. Oh, hello, good morning. Good morning to you. We were just trying to find out from people why they wanted to be here this morning. What, what's motivated you? Oh, it's just amazing. Just had to come and say our goodbyes. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's history, isn't it? We're never yeah. going to see it again. It's just a memory made for life. Yeah. How's it been overnight? You must hard. have been... Hard yeah, going. It was it 11 hours? Yeah, just over but it 11 was hours. two hours. It would have come to a bit of a standstill. Yeah. And that we hit a brick wall. For the funeral. That was really hard. But, but it's been... I forgot that now. Now yeah, we're here. Yeah, got a second so. wind and... Um, almost there. It hits and what's, you now. What's the, to tell people at home, what was the atmosphere like as you prepare to enter the hall now? It, oh. It, it changes. The mood changes. Yeah. You get very emotional, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. getting a bit of... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You yeah. take care. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Look after yourselves. Um, we've got lots of amazing stories. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Just tell us where you're from and we're why from, you've come. We're from Wandsworth. Wandsworth. Okay. Not very far, but we've started about 8:30 last night. And it was and we've fine. Gone all the way through the night. We were at a standstill for about uh, two and a half hours at the British Film Institute. So, yeah. 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 But otherwise, it's been you're great. almost there now. Yes. And what yes. was it that motivated? What was it about, about the Queen Elizabeth II? Yes, that you, for sure. You wanted to be here. I think we wanted to say thank you to her yeah. for being such a great queen and for serving us, you know, and yeah, being there for such a long time. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. you take care. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's interesting, there's quite a lot of younger people here, like a lot of children who've, who've waited through the night as well. There's one of them carrying a sleeping bag. Um, but we've got the story now of a little girl in Southampton called Lois. And she was shocked, really, to get a letter through the post the day after the Queen died from Her Majesty, thanking her, Lois, for a letter that Lois had sent to the Queen. Uh, James Ingham had been to meet her and her family. The Platinum Jubilee, a moment of special celebration for many this summer, including one young girl who really loved the Queen. All her years of reign, she's done so many things for all of us. So I sent a poem. You shine oh so bright like the stars in the night. Happy Jubilee, I hope you have a nice cup of tea. The Jubilee will be history and looking back you'll what they'll see. Happy Jubilee. I said, well, do you know what? It might be a nice idea to send it to the Queen. You know, she might see it, you never know. And just sort of forgot about it. Until last Friday, when some post arrived. I got a letter from Buckingham Palace. Then I opened it and um, I was just surprised. I was speechless. I send you my grateful thanks for your kind message on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of my accession to the throne, Elizabeth R. You were really excited to get something from the Queen, weren't you? <laughs> I've always been a big royalist and so uh, to have the Queen pass away one day and then the next day get a card from her, I'm happy and sad at the same time I suppose. Happy that I got a piece of history and a bit sad that well the Queen died. She lived a long happy life we might as well celebrate it. No other cards will have gone out from the Queen as of Thursday so yeah we've got a piece of history there and it will be treasured forever. I bet it will be. Thank you to Lois and her family for sharing their story with us. Uh, lots more stories. Everybody here in the queue has a story. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, tell us where you've come from. Uh, I've come from North Wales. Uh, proudly wearing your medals there. I am. Yeah. What, what's your connection to Her Majesty then? Um, so I serve for the, with the Army Reserves. Uh, I'm in the field hospital. Uh, I work for the NHS uh, as well. I'm a uh, a doctor and um, uh, yeah I think like everyone here uh, you know the the Queen um, meant quite a lot to me personally um, I think she represented us all uh, whatever your background whatever you uh, wherever you came from whatever your race uh, or your religion you know she, she was there as a as a constant who represented us all um, so felt I needed to come and pay my respects well said, beautifully said. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. No, thank you. Um, I say everybody's got a story. Good morning to you. Hello, BBC News. Good morning. How are you doing? We're how's, fine. How's it been overnight? Oh, it's been challenging. Yeah? But it's worth it. What have the challenges been? Uh, the weight to stand in. That's what it's been. But it's all in a good course. Yeah, you feel it's worth it. You're almost there now. Almost and, there, yeah. And just tell us, why was it so important for you to, to put yourselves through that? Why did you want to be here? Can I ask you as well? Well, because the Queen is probably going to be the last Queen I'm ever going to see in my lifetime. So I feel like I should pay my last respects to her before I never see another Queen again. And how special has it been in this queue? Well, the Queen, she's been a constant in my life. As soon as I was born, the Queen's always been there. So it's kind of like strange to think that someone you think, even though she's old, that she would never die is now gone. So yeah. yeah. Okay. You're almost there. Yeah. You're almost there. There's somebody in a push chair there as well. <laughs> well done you. How's that been? It's, it's been good. Good? <laughs> really? Hard work. She slept. She slept, <laughs> she slept for um, eight Hello. Hours. Good morning. How are you feeling? You feeling good? The iPad. How do you keep a charge on your iPad overnight? That's pretty impressive. She's only had it for half an hour. <laughs> you held it in reserve. <laughs> yes. You feeling all right? Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, she slept for eight hours. So that was. Um, she did well. 
did um, very well, eight hours. Yeah, You're fresh. because I've been here. Because you've been here, fresh air, fresh as a daisy this morning. Yeah, I'm just got turned into a bed. Yeah, well, that's, I'm glad you're comfortable. Yeah. I'm not sure the rest of the family are, but thank you very much indeed. Nice stretch, thank, thank you very you. much indeed. It's amazing what people uh, have been prepared to put themselves through for this. Hello, good morning. Hello, you look like you want to talk to us. I was kind of delivered. I was in the Air Force. I can see so, your medals as well with the Queen on, yeah. So I, was serving, I went into Afghanistan, but I did a nine years in the Air Force. So I'm here to pay more respect to my boss and be my successor. Your boss? My boss. Is that what it feels like? Yes. Come to say goodbye to the boss? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling as you approach the final? Yeah, getting there. Yeah. Slowly, emotions coming out now, I think. Yeah. So. It's an emotional time, right? It is. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you, thank you. Um, I don't think I've ever known a, an experience like this as a reporter where literally everybody wants to talk to you. Sometimes you put a camera in people's faces in any kind of crowd and uh, there's a reluctance or a shyness, but, but here literally everybody has been happy to talk to us. I've tempted fate now, haven't I? I know that the next person I try and talk to won't want to talk to us at all. We'll try and talk to some people later. But what we wanted to do as well this morning is talk about the situation in Northern Ireland, the, the, the fact that the Queen has played an important role in the peace process over the last few years, uh, communicating in different ways with different communities in Northern Ireland. It's something that our correspondent there, Chris Page, has been looking at. In Northern Ireland, castles are a backdrop for condolences. The fresh flowers have brought back old memories of the Queen's trips across the Irish Sea. Carrick Fergus Castle looked out on a very wet scene as the Royal Barge brought the Queen to the jetty. The step was too high Some of the most precious recollections are of people meeting the late monarch. I was so nervous, you know, and to think that I was going to meet the greatest person ever in my life and went forward down to the wee platform and you know, you did your curtsy and, and then you're looking under these two beautiful blue eyes looking at you and, and the smile. Just three months ago, residents of the Fountain Estate in Londonderry held a party for the Platinum Jubilee. The picture of Her Majesty, which they made for that occasion, now has a black ribbon attached as people prepare themselves for her funeral. I want to sit there and cry and and you know, just really drink in every single second, as we have been doing. I mean, everybody at the minute uh, here in this club, the minute they come in, the TV and they're sitting glued, and you know, you find an hour passes, two hour passes, and you could just sit there all day. It's almost 70 years since cameras captured this in Northern Ireland's capital. Thousands greeted the sovereign with joy during her coronation tour. But on the day of the funeral, this will be a place of sorrow rather than celebration. People will gather to watch proceedings in London and Windsor in front of a grand building which Queen Elizabeth II knew so well. Members of the Irish nationalist community ultimately want Northern Ireland to leave the United Kingdom. In these areas, fewer businesses are likely to close tomorrow. But while people don't feel connected to the monarchy, there's a recognition the Queen worked to heal a divided society. There was a huge degree of respect uh, for Queen Elizabeth and people were very anxious to express their, their regrets and their condolences uh, to King Charles. And there was a degree of warmth there which might not necessarily have been present in the past. And for those who cherish their unionist identity, the Queen was the prime symbol of Britishness. That sentiment is strong on the Shankill Road in Belfast. It'll be a sad, sad day for such a lovely lady. She has served our country well. Total honour. We take our hats off of her or mum for the years that she's given us. And we hope we can give something back for the future king. The Queen was revered by unionists and most often respected by nationalists. They'll both be contemplating her legacy as she's laid to rest. Chris Page, BBC News. The sun 
has risen here in London, which is giving us a bit of much needed warmth, especially for these people who've queued through the night. We're being told that the queue is now 13 and a half hours long. So we're expecting some news over the next few hours about exactly how the authorities are going to manage it. Because, of course, at 6.30 tomorrow, Westminster Hall will queue, uh, will close to the public. Uh, and we need to make sure that uh, everybody who can can get in there by that point and people aren't going to be waiting, hopefully, uh, needlessly overnight. Over that sun giving us some warmth this morning. Let's see how much sunshine there is going to be across the UK for everybody today. Chris has the weather for us. Morning Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's just gone 10 to 8. We'll have more from John and the team in London a little bit later on, but let's have a look at the day's other news. Now we return to reflections on Her Majesty the Queen and over her life she made so many visits to towns and cities up and down the UK. There were throngs of people always hoping to meet or catch a glimpse of the Queen. One of those trips was for an unveiling in the seaside town of Morecambe in Lancashire. And our North of England correspondent Judith Moritz has been speaking to those who met the Queen that special day. If I had the opportunity to escort the Queen around Morecambe for her royal visit, I would want to show Morecambe in the best view possible. From here, there is a view overlooking the lakes, Grange and Cumbria. The first place I would love the Queen to picture... As a teenager, Anna Harper wrote this essay about showing her hometown to the Queen. It was for a competition to meet the monarch when she visited Morecambe in 1999, and Anna won. I wish she had an ice cream on the prom. I don't think she did, but <laughs> I would have liked her to. Uh, <laughs> I still can't believe it. I still sometimes look at the picture and think, oh gosh, that was me. <laughs> And that's the Queen. And for her to come here where I was and my special place where I grew up, it was, it was just magical, magical. The Queen was in town to unveil the statue of its most famous son, Eric Morecambe, who'd taken his stage name from the resort. The statue was built after a campaign by the local newspaper, which printed a special edition. But that wasn't the only media coverage. Now, he's one of Britain's best-loved comedians, and today he received the Royal Seal of Approval as the Queen unveiled a... I think we would have got the statue on, um, you know, regional news programmes quite comfortably in its own right, but the fact that the Queen was here, that elevated it to, I think it was one of the lead items on, on national news that, that day, and um, that certainly raised the profile of the town. Morecambe and Wise met the Queen several times, here at a film premiere in 1973, and then three years later when she awarded them the OBE. She seemed very at ease to be unveiling a comedian, which is very strange, and I like to think that shows her respect for Morecambe and Wise. Eric Morecambe's son, Gary, says the relationship between the monarch and the comic duo was a strong one. The Queen was a great Morecambe and Wise fan, actually. I think the whole family was, the whole royal family. Um, yeah, they used to tune into the shows, and apparently on Christmas Day, the, the lunch was built around the show starting, so they had to have their meal in time to watch the show, which I always thought was really wonderful. I think that's a lovely thought. The royal visit is still remembered fondly in Morecambe as the day when the Queen came to pay homage to the King of Comedy. Well, I was staggered when I heard the Queen was going to unveil it. So then you started thinking, yeah, this is real. She, she is going, going, she's really going to show up. Uh, and she did. She did, in all her magnificence. Hello there, good morning, Sunday morning. Welcome to Breakfast from BBC News with me, John Kay, live in Westminster. And Nina is in the studio. Here are your headlines at eight o'clock this Sunday morning. And the Queen's consort has been paying tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile, you know, that smile is unforgettable. Well, thousands continue to pay their respect as the Queen's body lies in state here for another 24 hours. Tomorrow's funeral will be shown on big screens and in cinemas across the UK.
The US President Joe Biden has arrived in the UK ahead of the Queen's funeral. He will be meeting King Charles along with other world leaders at Buckingham Palace a little later. And away from Westminster, today's other headlines. A man's been charged with attempted murder after two police officers were stabbed in London's Leicester Square. And in sport, Sun Hyung Min scores a stunning 13-minute hat-trick as Tottenham continue their unbeaten run in the Premier League. Good morning, everybody. Sunday, the 18th of September, you're watching Breakfast from BBC News. We're outside Westminster Hall, the Palace of Westminster, as thousands of people uh, process inside to pay their respects to Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, these people have been waiting for hours, 12, 13, 14 hours through the cold and through the dark overnight, and more are arriving and joining the queue every moment. The public paying their respects, but uh, we also have a statement that's been recorded by Queen Consort Camilla. She's recorded a, a televised statement making her own very personal tribute to the Queen, her mother-in-law, uh, praising Elizabeth II for carving out her own role in a male-dominated world. And we can hear a clip from that interview right now. She has been part of our lives forever. I'm 75 now and I, I can't remember anybody except the Queen being there. It must have been so difficult for her being a solitary woman. There weren't women prime ministers or women presidents. Um, she was the only one, so I think she carved her own role. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile. You know, that smile is unforgettable. It doesn't matter who you are, royal family, or any family, those comments about the glint in the eye, that smile of the Queen, are exactly the same comments that you get when you talk to people in the crowd, as well as there from uh, Queen Consort Camilla. Uh, that crowd is moving quickly, isn't it? That's uh, a shot from above looking down onto it. These people uh, just approaching the Palace of Westminster, so they'll be inside the hall able to pay their respects in the next 20 minutes or, or half an hour or so they've waited right through the night um, we understand the queue is currently about 12 or 13 hours long and this being sunday and this being uh, pretty decent weather ahead uh, we're expecting the queue to get longer and longer and it means that the authorities are going to have to make a decision and make public that decision in the next few hours about how long the queue will remain open because uh, Westminster Hall will close to the public at 6.30 tomorrow morning ahead of the funeral. But ahead of that funeral, uh, world leaders have been arriving in the UK uh, to take part. Uh, the US President Joe Biden and his wife Jill, they flew into, into the UK last night. And Duncan Kennedy has been looking at those high profile arrivals and the regular people who also want to be here. Two countries united by one grief. President Biden landing last night at Stansted with the First Lady ahead of tomorrow's funeral. He's one of around 500 heads of state and dignitaries taking part. From presidents who cross oceans to people who line rivers, Mr. Biden arrives in a capital whose centre has been transformed. Keep on going, guys. Keep on going. At its heart, a queue whose length is measured in hours, not yards. Some even have proof. I've been here for eight hours and 14 seconds. Uh, 14 minutes. <laughs> I've, that's how long I've been here for. <laughs> At times, the queue has been 10 miles long. For some, the walking brings weariness and a need to loosen the limbs. Not far behind them, someone honoured by the Queen, who knows all about pace and perseverance. In my head, it's like, I have to join this queue. So I stopped all my plans the weekend, got on the train this morning, uh, met some friends to change my clothes, and here I am. The queue's tempo has varied, but has consistently remained patient and determined. To many here, the Queen is not A, but the national treasure.
She's given us so much. She's given us her whole life. And I just rang Mum and I said, I think we just need to go. What does she mean to you, the Queen? I think quite a lot, because obviously we've all grown up with her being obviously our Queen and she's had such an impact on all our lives. I think she means quite a lot to all of us. I was a guardsman myself, um, working outside Buckingham Palace and, and the Tower and Windsor Castle. Um, I feel quite a, a close uh, affinity with the royal family. Um, especially the Queen. Um, I've met her on occasions um, and I just think it's my duty to come down and, and show my respects. When this queue does finally close and the last person files past the Queen's coffin sometime early tomorrow morning, it will mark the end of an unprecedented act of collective tribute. Attention will then move from Westminster Hall to Westminster Abbey for the funeral. Last night inside Westminster Hall, standing sentinel to their beloved grandmother, the Queen's eight grandchildren, posted to all sides of the plinth. A symmetrical display of her extended family's devotion. Flowing around them, those who've come to pay respects to a long royal life, bookended by coronation and commemoration. Westminster Hall carrying the solemnity of a cathedral amid the silence of a library. The Prime Minister of Australia, Your Majesty. At Buckingham Palace, King Charles has been meeting some of the Commonwealth leaders who've arrived for the funeral. They included the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. He's previously declared himself a Republican, but said such matters were for another time. At Windsor Castle, they've been moving tens of thousands of flowers from well-wishers inside the castle grounds, ready for the burial ceremony, with the blooms all facing towards Her Majesty's beloved home. Tonight at 8pm, the country will hold a national moment of reflection for one minute, to stop and think about the life and legacy of the Queen. It comes ahead of tomorrow's funeral, a momentous occasion of state, a family farewell, and a full stop moment in this nation's history. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News. Well, here we are just after eight o'clock on a Sunday morning. The sun is out. It looks like it's going to be a rather lovely day here. It's warming up the crowds who've been in the cold and in the darkness. Uh, through the last 12, 13 hours or so, and of course those many thousands more who are joining every hour at the back of the queue, seven or eight miles away, who have got hours and hours to go before they get to this point. And everybody thinking about today, but also looking ahead to tomorrow. And we know that more than a thousand sailors and Royal Marines will pr be preparing to take part in the Queen's funeral tomorrow, uh, pulling the state ceremonial gun carriage bearing the Queen's coffin, uh, taking it from Westminster Hall here uh, to Westminster Abbey at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning for the funeral. And we're joined here on breakfast today by Admiral Sir Ben Key, who's the first Sea Lord and Chief of Naval Staff. Thank you so much for joining us. John, good morning. Um, privilege. We know that this is a, a huge privilege uh, for your team, for, for your uh, sailors and, and Royal Navy personnel. Just talk us through what it is that they will be doing, because they're going to be right at the front of, of this procession tomorrow. So, yes, right at the heart of the procession are the sailors who are pulling the gun carriage. As you said, a uh, tradition that goes back to the funeral of Queen Victoria, where they stepped in at the last minute, and, and, a, and it's a duty that we've cherished um, ever since. But actually, there are many others who are up here in London supporting. There are marching contingents, the vans of the Royal Marine Band Service, Royal Marines themselves, street liners. And then we've got many hundreds of sailors also working as stewards, um, assisting the sort of the general organization of, of the day. But it's not just those who are here in London or the thousand or so service personnel in Windsor. Actually, across the country, there are other people supporting because for every person that's come to London or to Windsor to put on a uniform and take part that actually means that that's a, a sailor a soldier an aviator who has to take their duty 
whether that's up in Scotland in the barracks, that could be an air station in the Midlands, or for us, you know, the naval bases on the south coast. So it is an extraordinary coming together of the UK armed forces, our civil servants and support contractors to play our part in this national and global moment. We're seeing pictures here of, of some of the rehearsals that have been taking place over the last couple of days. For those uh, sailors who are involved in, in the procession of the coffin itself that we'll see tomorrow, it is a, it's a really complicated job, isn't it, that they have to do to, to get it absolutely perfect. Just talk us through the, the, the manoeuvring. So, as you can see, there's a huge amount of rehearsal required. Um, it's, it's not light. It's quite a heavy affair. And the people that are, that are marching behind the coffin, in fact, are the brakes. Um, so that attention has to be maintained the whole time on the gun carriage so that it moves at the requisite pace, balanced between momentum and the streets of London are not all flat. You know, there's cobbles, there's sand as you go across Horse Guards Parade. And then the final hall up Constitution Hill um, actually it takes a huge amount of, of skill and personal fitness. But having met those that are involved, whether they've been in the service just a few months for the youngest people there, or coming towards the end of many decades of service, uh, they all share that same sense of deep personal pride and an absolute commitment that this final mark of respect that we, the armed forces, are making for Her Late Majesty goes as perfectly. Oh, well, it, it will go perfectly. You know, no one, no one is, uh, wants to let the side down. And it applies to all of us. I mean, we've all, you know, myself and my fellow service chiefs have been rehearsing in the middle of the night as well. There's no fear or favour on rank when it comes to uh, getting these things correct. And you took part with some of those service chiefs in one of the vigils, didn't you, in, inside the hall or, or around the coffin? That must have been a, it, quite some moment. It was a remarkable privilege um, to, to go and join that, that moment. And... And, and for us to reflect ourselves on our own connections uh, with the Queen. We all had the privilege of knowing her. I myself was um, fortunate to command HMS Lancaster, what the Queen's frigate. So for many years, I've, through many years, I, I've met her. And we have, you know, as, as has been reported so many times, she was the most natural person to meet. But she was well informed, she was engaged, she was interested, she was interesting. And she kept us to account as well, because as she has reflected, I think, on more than one occasion, as the daughter, the wife and mother of naval officers, she knew what naval life was about. And, and both in, in acknowledging the service of the sailors and the Marines who go to sea and around the world, she also wanted to make sure that their, their families, our families, were being looked after. She understood separation, uh, times at sea, and she understood also um, the pressures that naval life can bring and she wanted to just acknowledge all of us in the naval community as well as across her armed forces as a whole for the contribution that we make. So when you were there standing right next to the coffin as part of that vigil I guess those are some of the thoughts that that you were having those kind of things well, that were going through. I was I was um, privileged enough to have a, an audience with Her Majesty in May uh, we talked about many things but one of the things we reflected upon then was that um, her father and my grandfather fought alongside each other in HMS Collingwood at the Battle of Jutland. Uh, and it was a bond that stayed with them through the rest of their respective lives. And I think what we were just um, reflecting upon was that sense of service uh, and the fact that this is shared from royalty to commoner. And I found myself thinking, here I am standing just a few feet away from someone who was a global figure, but also a very human person, and was grateful um, for what she did for us. And you've spent time in the last couple of days with His Majesty King Charles as well. Yes, I mean, how he found time to see his service chiefs, I don't know, in amongst all the pressures upon his timetable, but we had the privilege of an audience with him yesterday. He was engaged, he was engaging. Um, he also took trouble to find out what else we were doing on military operations around the world. I mean, the, you know, the lens is understandably focusing in on London, but service personnel deployed um, globally, still engaged in security uh, operations. From Ukraine would be an obvious one, but we maintain the independent nuclear deterrent submarine remains on patrol. None of that stops. Uh, and we took an opportunity to talk about those, those things and also uh, clearly to 
mark our condolences to him and his his family and it was a chance for us to just commit ourselves without you know sort of fanfare or an oath to serving him in the way that we served his late mother you alluded to it there. I mean, the fact that he's having to have all these meetings, he's meeting presidents and prime ministers from all over the world today at Buckingham yeah. Palace, hosting the world, really, in London, isn't he? And yet also grieving as, as a son. I mean, how, how did he seem up close when you, you saw him? Well, there was, there was a sort of... There was a mix of sadness and sparkle, depending upon where the conversation took us. Uh, I think we're all capable of you know we've all experienced our own moments of grief and we are capable of smiling in amidst them but I, I think I just come away with um, huge respect for what the royal family are going through at the moment I think we would all find it very difficult to grieve in such a public mm. manner um, I hope after tomorrow is over they will no doubt have times to reflect privately amongst themselves uh, but my admiration for His Majesty the King remains uh, as high as it always has, actually. He's, he's, he's been a great supporter um, of us all and no doubt will we'll continue to be so. Admiral Sir Ben Key, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, good luck with your final rehearsals today. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, these people waiting uh, for the final few moments before they get inside Westminster Hall. And of course, we're talking a lot this morning about what we can expect from that funeral service uh, tomorrow. And our religion editor, Aline McBool, has been speaking to some of those involved. Throughout her reign, in good times and bad, the Queen drew heavily from her faith to guide her. And this little church on the edges of the Balmoral Estate was a place she held dear. She came to services at Crathy Kirk all her life, with very little ceremony, though there was a royal seat on a royal pew where she always sat. The Queen was a very regular churchgoer. If she was here, almost always would come to church. For 15 years, Ken Mackenzie was domestic chaplain to the Queen. And He'll be among those at Windsor for her final service. Some of the moments I would cherish most would be moments when the, the Queen would speak to me as a parish minister. I remember being over there one evening. So I asked her what her favorite hymn was. She said to me that her fondest memory ever of a Christian song was her father singing to her at her bedside as, they, as she was going to bed. The hymn she remembered her father singing was based on the parable of the sheep lost in open country. Although the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. Lord Sentamu, former Archbishop of York, is one of a small team that came up with the original order of service yes. for the Queen's funeral. He says her knowledge of scripture was remarkable. She knows the Psalms by heart and can recite them. So you can be in a conversation. Um, one time, you know, she was going through quite a trying period. We've been talking and suddenly I lift up my eyes the hills. Where's come with my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And you knew whatever difficulty she's going through, her anchor is in God. And it was that anchor of her faith that once led the Queen to say this. As dark as death can be, particularly for those suffering with grief, light and life are greater. Aline McBool, BBC News. 20 past eight this Sunday morning and the Union flag at half mast above the Palace of Westminster here in central London. Right now, this building is the focus of the world's attention. This is Westminster Hall where people continue to process through to pay their respects to the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II. People who've queued all night for mile after mile and who are finally now inside. 
that moment of peace and tranquility and reverence inside after hours of chatting and waiting with fellow cures. Well, our reporter Charlotte Gallagher is here with us and has spent several days now queue watching, haven't you? Um, it's interesting, it seems to be moving quite quickly this morning. The authorities seem to be keen to get people through because they know that come 6.30 tomorrow morning, that's it. Yes, and we've seen with other events during this time that when they say something will stop or start at a certain time, it does. It's done on military precision. So 6.30 a.m. lying in state finishes tomorrow morning. So at some point today, the government will have to make a call about this queue, when to stop people joining the queue, because the last thing they want is people queuing potentially for 14 hours, getting to the front here and then being told they can't go in and see the Queen lying in state, because that would obviously be devastating for people who've spent hours and hours in that queue. So they will have to make that call. If you are thinking of coming down, there's still time to join the queue, but we're expecting this afternoon or this evening they will close it and you will no longer be able to join it. So if you do want to see the Queen lying in state, State, it's best to come down sooner rather than later. And we should stress that the accessible queue for people with mobility issues, that closed permanently yesterday, didn't it? Yes, that runs slightly differently. Yeah. People get a time slot and there was a lot of disappointed people saying, I wanted to come down and I didn't have chance because it closed earlier than I expected. So a lot of upset people, people who can't stand for 14 hours in a queue, very disappointed that they've not been able to see the Queen lying in state. But decisions have to be made about these queues and when they're going to stop. Lots and lots of people have seen the Queen now. Thousands have filed past us every day. And it's been amazing talking to people, hearing people's stories. I met one woman, her brother was in the army and he'd actually recently died and she bought his urn with her because she wanted to bring her him with her because she felt it would be something he would want to go to. Another family, they'd set off from Wales at two o'clock in the morning, got here, they'd brought a photo of their grandma because they knew that she would want to be here if she could. Lots of people queuing, not just for themselves, but for other people that are no longer here. And representing their families or their friends or their neighbours or their, their work colleagues. Charlotte, for now, thank you very much indeed. Uh, there's a lot of people just at this final bit before they go inside Westminster Hall. Uh, obviously, they can't take food inside. So uh, if you've got sealed food, you're asked to put it into a separate file, uh, 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 some bin area, some bags, and that that uh, food is going to be distributed to food banks and to charities uh, for homeless people across London. So there's a real sense here uh, that there should be no waste, that things are recycled along with the blankets as well, uh, that it all gets well used. Uh, if you're watching this morning and you're thinking about tomorrow, the day of the funeral, or wondering how and when and where you're going to watch it, uh, this is the information you need to know because uh, the funeral itself starts at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning in Westminster Abbey and that's going to be broadcast on TV everywhere. It is of course on BBC One as well as on ITV and Sky. But if you're wanting to be here in person, there will be special viewing places uh, along the route of the funeral procession uh, in London and in Windsor. Now, in London, the public procession will be between Westminster Abbey following the service, that'll be about 12 noon, and Wellington Arch. So people can gather between those two spots. While the Windsor procession later in the afternoon tomorrow will travel along the long walk uh, before then going into the castle grounds. That's where a private service will take place but uh, it's high tech as well across the UK there'll be big screens up in different areas uh, I think there's some in Hyde Park I saw signs up for earlier but in places across the country some big screens going up and 125 cinemas are also showing services around the UK if you look on the BBC News website or on the app you can see more information local to where you are this morning all the events and developments uh, leading up to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth on BBC News website and iPlayer and of course BBC Breakfast will be here for you tomorrow morning uh, ahead of the funeral uh, with all the final preparations and everything you need to know for the day ahead and also hearing your stories as well this is your program and we're keen to reflect your stories and your connection to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. One thing that is very much on the minds of people here waiting especially at the back of the queue is the weather how is it going to look today and even into tonight for those people who are prepared to wait that long. Chris has the weather for all of us this morning. Hi Chris. 
Thank you, Chris. Clear run then for tomorrow. Fingers crossed. We'll be back with John and the team in London a little bit later on. But coming up to half past eight, let's take a look at the day's other news. I'll be back with more news and sports soon. But let's go back to John in Westminster. Morning, John. We've heard from the head of the Navy this morning. We've heard from the Queen Consort. We also heard from Cathy, who sat here and told us about an NHS ward she worked on with children after the Manchester bomb and, and the intimacy with which the Queen engaged with those kids. So many tributes, so yeah. many stories and so many people there, each with their own reason for being there. It is every single person, every one of these hundreds of thousands of people who've queued every day has their own reason, their own story, their own connection, uh, their own reason for being here. Um, and it's it's wonderful. Let's hear some of those stories, shall we? Let, let's talk to them. We've got a family who've just turned up. Hello. Come and have a chat with us. Hello. You're live on BBC Breakfast. Hi. <laughs> Big smiles, <laughs> but maybe some yawns as well, right? <laughs> We're uh, ready. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see your energy is good after a night on the street waiting. Chocolate and cookies. Is that the secret? <laughs> mm -hmm. Where have you come from? Where's Norwich. Home? Norwich. Yeah. And how are you guys feeling? Excited and tired. Excited and tired. I think that sums it up for everybody, doesn't it? Yeah. What's it like? Why did you want to come from Norwich to be to be part of this today? Let me talk to you. On um, I think it's just important to pay our respects. Um, the Queen's been a massive part of our life, well, all of my life, and yeah, I just feel it's a, a special occasion. It's nice to for her to be here, uh, for us to be here to pay our respects to her. There'll be loads of people watching this morning who are thinking, I wonder what it's like to be in that queue. You, you tell them, what, what, give me some words to describe it. How would you describe the atmosphere? I just think it's really nice that we should um, show how much she means to us and how grateful we are that we had her to reign over us. Yeah. What's it been like with the people around us? It's been lovely, hasn't yeah. it? It's been nice well atmosphere. looked after, yeah. It's been a lovely atmosphere. Yeah. And when your friends at school say to you, what's it been like? What will you say? Well, I liked coming because I wanted we wanted to pay our respects to the Queen, but it was tiring because we had to walk all the way. But I think it was worth it. What have you got in your shoes? You've got you got your trainers on. Everybody's got trainers on, haven't they? Comfy. Are they have they been comfy enough? Yeah. Yeah. And if somebody's watching this morning and they're thinking, oh, I might go down later. I might go and do the queue myself. What would your top tips be? Well, you have to have patience, like be patient, because there's loads of queues, like, like queues down there, so you just How have about, to be patient. How about, what's the really important thing at school about grit and... Determination. Grit and determination. For people in the queue, I guess that's what the Queen showed for all those years as well, and grit and determination. Yeah, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank what were your names again? Isla. Isla and... Lexi. And mums, thank you so much for joining us. Take care. You're almost there. Good morning to you. Can we have a quick chat with you? You're live on BBC yes. Breakfast. Um, we're, we're talking, reflecting on the life of the Queen and why people have, have come. Yeah. Well, we've been in the queue since about 9pm last night and it's just, um, we have a connection to just the royal family. We're originally from Turkey and it just we don't have a royal family there so we feel really connected oh, right. to our royal family that we have here so we've and come to pay our respects. The amazing duty she is that and at least we could just pay some respect so it's been an amazing experience. Tiring but good. Tiring. I mean, what would you normally be doing on a Saturday night? Um, I, well it'll be a Sunday morning now and I'll be hungover in bed. <laughs> so, so, so this is healthy. I've done about 20,000 steps so she's doing me another favour. And you've got quite a few thousand more to go. I mean, you're almost there, but yeah, it's been almost a lot. It's been great, so can't okay. wait to get in now. Thank you for, Thank for stopping you. to talk Thank to us. You. Thank Take you very care. much Bye -bye. indeed. Okay. Let me just talk to... Everybody will talk to us. Good morning. Hi, Good morning. you're live on BBC Breakfast. Good morning to you. You've got some lovely medals on. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about your family connection, where you've okay, come. Okay, so uh, this is my son, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Um, I've served for 22 years in Merseyside Police. Um, this is the Queen's... Um, oh, yeah. Golden Jubilee Platinum. medal. Platinum Jubilee medal. What's that one, Charlie? I forgot. <laughs> That's the uh, good You've conduct. Had 12 and... hours to get that right, Charlie. To learn about... <laughs> Long service and good conduct. So I think yeah. for me, um, having served, trying to serve the public in my role, there's no better example of that than the Queen okay. doing that, serving the public for 70 years in her role. It's a privileged role that I occupy, and it's a very privileged role that Her Majesty occupied. So. Uh, we said last night we wanted to come. Charlie loves history, wanted to be a part of history, so uh, here we are today. What's it been like so far, Charlie? 
uh, tiring. Yeah, uh, but it's going to be worth it, isn't it? It's something yeah. you'll be able to tell your children and grandchildren about yeah. in, in years to come. Yeah. And you're nearly there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, look, thank you for stopping thank and talking to us. Thank Have you very much. Have a great day. You're nearly there. Let's go, Pam. Um, so this is the end of the queue. These people are almost inside Westminster Hall, yes. but for people who are snaking all the way around the River Thames, sorry, I nearly hit somebody's face then, uh, they're like 10 miles at the back in Southwark Park. Uh, our correspondent Lauren Moss is there, and Lauren, uh, this lovely autumnal Sunday morning, I guess a lot of people not working and thousands turning up to, to join this queue. It's going to get really busy. They are, and it's already really, really busy. We've been here a couple of hours, and hundreds, hundreds, possibly thousands of people are already heading into to Southwark Park. I'm at the very, very start point of the queue. You can see the sign behind me warning. From this point, 14 hours, people have to, to walk and wait until they get to, to near where you are. And everyone is very eager to head in, but uh, some people ha have paused before they set off to talk to me. Firstly, let's have a chat to Brian. You originally uh, come from the United States, but you've lived here for two decades. Why was it important for you to come here? I just felt great respect for the British monarchy, especially in modern times for, um, during the 20th century and their um, a beacon of you know, freedom and de democracy. And you might not get in till midnight. Are you, are you ready for the long... I'm ready for the slog. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Let's nip over here. We've got Selena and your and your mother. Um, yes. Hi. Good you've uh, you've actually all come from London. What I'm noticing yes. is that we're we're seeing more people today that are coming not from too far away. Yesterday yes. was people from all, from all over the UK a bit more. Right, yeah. Why did you decide to leave it till Sunday to come? Well, to be honest, I think it was the only day really feasible for me to come in, and um, we decided to start early. Um, you know, really looking forward to be part of this momentous, you know, moment in history and become part of history, really, by witnessing this, you know, this, uh, I mean, it's such a, such a loss to the country, um, you know, growing up as a little child, all we knew was, you know, the Queen and, you know, it's just, it's, it's really hit, I think it's hit us all um, in different ways, but I really felt like her loss and will really miss her. Yeah. She's uh, been fabulous. And what about for you? What will it mean to you to, to be standing in, in Westminster Hall, uh, possibly in the early hours of tomorrow morning? Yeah, we'll be fine. Finally. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It was his honour to the Queen. Yeah, I literally want to pay respect to the people. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You, you. You've been very kind hanging on thank for us. Let's uh, nip around here and, and have a chat to both of you. What are your names and where have you come from today? I'm Ioni. I'm from uh, Bromley. And Amanda. From Bromley. So not, not too far, uh, just, not for, too just, far. just for, for from South London. And you know, tell me, really, why Sunday have you come? The, the sun is shining on you, but we've heard that, you know, the queue could close at some point today. Well, it's my day off from work. And um, I remember the Queen when I was a little girl and she came to Jamaica. All of us look up to the Queen and I just want to go and say thanks. That's, this is the only day I've got. The Queen is the epitome of everything, of style, of tolerance, of greatness, of commitment. I have to go and say thank you. What about for, for you, Amanda? Uh, what will it mean to you to, to get, get in there? I just feel like it's probably like possibly a once in a lifetime experience. Who knows, like if anything like this will happen again and I think it'll probably be the last female monarch like queen in my lifetime and just to experience it I guess yeah well thank you very much for speaking to me I'll, I'll, I'll let you let you get inside so as you can see there's people coming from all over like I say more people I've noticed uh, from uh, the London area today I think people that I spoke to yesterday from Yorkshire and some from Florida and Belgium uh, they, they've come a bit earlier so now everyone else is uh, is getting their last chance to, to come into Southwark Park the very start of the queue you might be able to make out behind me uh, there's uh, some flowers uh, laid there for the Queen uh, thanking Her Majesty for her service I had a read of some of the cards earlier earlier but yes yeah, so this is the start it's a long way to go to the end 14 hours at some point today the queue will close because they want to make sure that everybody has got through to Westminster Hall to pay their respects before it officially closes at 6 30 tomorrow morning uh, for the Queen's funeral takes place at about 10 30 to 11 o'clock tomorrow morning we'll keep you updated throughout the day yeah, Lauren, thank you very much indeed. Yes, full coverage on the BBC throughout the day and we'll bring you any news uh, as it comes into us from the government about what the plan is for the queue because, uh, as Lauren's just saying, uh, Westminster Hall will close to the public strictly at 6.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, so people who are thinking about heading to London need to know what the latest point might be for them 
uh, to join so that uh, people aren't disappointed. Let me just talk you through uh, what's likely to happen today then, uh, because this is the fourth and the, the final day that the Queen's coffin will be in Westminster Hall, uh, where people can pay their respects as she lies in state. Uh, this evening, there will be a one minute silence uh, across the UK. That will be at eight o'clock tonight, and people will be able to mark that silence uh, either privately in their own homes, but we've also heard on breakfast this morning from people who are getting together with neighbours or at work, having community events and vigils. Meanwhile, the King's official duties continue. Uh, he mourns privately, grieves privately, but he's also holding a, an audience with the Prime Minister Liz Truss at Buckingham Palace today to talk through the final details for the funeral tomorrow. And the King and Queen Consort are also hosting heads of state and uh, official overseas guests who've been arriving in their thousands in London over the last few hours, including President Joe Biden and his wife Jill, the First Lady of the United States. Uh, they turned up and flew into Stansted last night uh, and they will be meeting King Charles today, among others. So our new king has a packed day ahead of him, even before he gets to the funeral itself tomorrow. But as well as hearing from people in the queue here in central London, here on Breakfast, we wanted to get around the UK and hear your stories from uh, communities uh, everywhere. And our correspondents, Coletta Smith and David Wallace Lockhart, uh, jumped in a car and they've been driving from place to place just to hear about how you are marking this moment in our history. Buckled in and we'll head off on our grand tour. Jade, hi. Travelling across the north of England yesterday, the only queue we encountered was at the bar. Yeah, of course you can. But people are marking this weekend in weird and wonderful ways. Football match on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you run the park run here in Saltair? I do. We met runners and worship leaders. This is the Grand Hall at Victoria Mill. We heard about plans for food banks, festivals and football matches. There's some view. This morning, I'm behind the wheel as we leave Lancashire and head south. First stop, Cheshire. Go. And it's Ellesmere Port. See you a bit. <laughs> I'm meeting the delightful Andrew and his family. Hey. I'll show you. He's made and sent so many cards to the Queen over the last few years that they practically became pen pals. This one's like a letter. The Queen was glad to learn that you like to help others and to know that you and your brother and sister, Aaron and Amelia, have Excuse raised money. Me. Bless you. Thank to you. support children's charities. I write, um, happy Christmas or how much we raised or, or when it's her birthday or when Prince Philip died. You sent, you wrote a yeah. card and sent it? Yeah. Or her 70 years on the throne. That's a really lovely idea. Yeah. Who's next then? Who are you writing to next? Good luck for Prince Charles for being king. Yeah. And and I'll do a happy Christmas one to Prince William. On Monday, which is going to be the Queen's funeral, do you think you'll be watching that or what are your plans as a family? Um, we're hopefully going to watch Pirates of Caribbean 4 and 5. That is a great idea. <laughs> Down at the waterfront, I want to find out what people have planned for the funeral tomorrow. Uh, it's uh, videos and it's, if you pop down, it's there. It's not long before I bump into YouTuber Xander and his dad. How's Xander planning to spend his bank holiday? Probably doing stuff on YouTube, to be honest. Maybe, maybe occasionally popping downstairs to have a looking at the TV, but yeah, pretty much just YouTube. Do you have a television? Turns out we're not the only ones travelling around at the moment. Loris has come over from New Zealand for a canal barge holiday. I think it's a very important moment in history, isn't it? It's, it's uh, possibly not something that we'll experience again in our lifetime. And you'll potentially find somewhere for the funeral tomorrow, is that right? That's what our hope is, yes. We're hoping to be back in Chester where we can get a good signal and and watch it on, on television. The Kiwi flag is at half-mast for the Queen. As we get back on the road, this time heading for Wales. So it's, it's us officially entering Conway, yeah. I've got the best deal this afternoon. A proper day out at the seaside. 
And here in Tlandidno, the pier is packed. But it'll be a different scene tomorrow as the whole thing will be closed off. Bank holiday is usually the busiest uh, throughout the year for us, um, but we just thought we made the decision just for it to be right in the uh, eyes of the public as well. Um, also, all our staff, all our team, they want to spend the day remembering. You've never had any royals? No, not yet. In, not yet. <laughs> on this particular way? Not yet, no. <laughs> but yeah, well, hopefully, think, yeah. hopefully, soon. <laughs> hopefully, they'll come down. So, you run the pier here, but you're, you're not a fan of heights. I'm not, no. This is the second time uh, I've been on it. Um, my colleague who, who runs the wheel, he does on purpose, stops it right at the top for us, he knows full well I'm scared of ice. So. <laughs> I'm dropping in on Alicia. Alicia, hi. hi. I'm David. Lovely nice to meet, to meet you. you. She's an artist who posts her work on TikTok. Her recent painting of the Queen has around two and a half million views. I spent ages and, you know, many hours looking at um, her face and trying to, you know, work out her features and everything. So, yeah, I was really upset. Um, so I sort of felt like I knew her. Sometimes being far away doesn't mean you can't feel close to someone. Everywhere we've been on this road trip has felt very far from London and it's felt very far from those official events. But still so many people wanting to mark this weekend somehow. And we've ended up in a land that's built around the holiday industry. But this bank holiday weekend looks like no other. Yeah. Should we start thinking about heading back? I'm not going anywhere until I finish this ice cream and devour the flake. That's a good point. <laughs> David and Coletta have got the right idea there. I've just been told by somebody in the queue uh, that there are lots of ice cream vans along the route as well, providing uh, a bit of sustenance as well as coffee, importantly, for the people who've been waiting for, for hour upon hour through the night. 12, 13 hours these people have waited, but they are almost at Westminster Hall now for the lying in state. One person who is going to be in the Abbey tomorrow for the funeral is Nancy O'Neill, who's from Bradford and joins us now on breakfast. Good morning to you, Nancy. You've got all of this ahead of you, but hopefully when you get to London, you won't have to queue. Uh, just, just tell us about your own connection and, and how you came to be invited to the funeral. Yes, thank you and good morning. On um, Saturday afternoon last week, I was in a car showroom buying a new car and my phone rang, no caller ID, so I ummed and ahed about whether to uh, answer it, but I did answer it because there was very little else going on at the time and a man said he was ringing from the Cabinet Office and uh, I'd been awarded an MBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours this year and because of that, and we hadn't yet received those awards, uh, he asked, would I be interested in attending the Queen's funeral? When I'd got over the shock uh, and said things like, wow, that's amazing, I said, yes, of course I'd be uh, interested in attending. And he said, well, somebody will be in touch shortly and, uh, and we'll go from there. Just imagine if you hadn't picked up that call. That's a lesson for everybody, isn't it? Answer the phone. Yeah, and that, that's what I thought, because often when you get those, the, the people trying to sell you insurance or you've been in an accident or something like that. So I don't always answer them, but yeah, absolutely, because I assume that you've just moved on to the next person. What an honour to be there tomorrow for this moment, to be able to say goodbye and to represent your family, your friends and, and your colleagues, because you, you've worked for the NHS as well, haven't you, for a long time? Yes, I started my nurse training in the NHS in uh, 1980, September 1980, so almost 42 years ago now. And I've worked in the NHS in various different roles for all of that time. So I do see it very much as a representative role. I am representing myself, my family, but also all of my colleagues and not just the ones in working in the NHS in Bradford District and Craven where I work, but also my social care colleagues, particularly in the last couple of years. We've, they've all worked incredibly hard together to, to get through the COVID pandemic. So I see it as as something for them, not just for me. But yeah, an absolute honour, um, incredibly proud and what a privilege. You know, I listen to those people that have been queuing to go and, um, and see the Queen's coffin now and I think, well, I would have done that. You know, I considered going, taking my grandchildren. Uh, but now, well, the big queues, I suspect it'll be a little bit challenging for me getting around London tomorrow just like it is everybody else. But I'm going to try and soak in some of the atmosphere and, and enjoy the whole day. 
So you'll be there inside the Abbey, but you want to spend some time on the, on the streets around as well, just, just experiencing this. How are you going to get here from Bradford? What's your plan? Because we're being warned to expect uh, an awful lot of people using the, the UK's transport links tomorrow. Yeah, so I've, I'm going down on the train this afternoon. So I'm hoping to get down uh, not as easy a journey as I would have normally expected because for some reason the direct train from Leeds doesn't seem to be running today. So, or at least if they are not one that I could get my ticket booked on. Uh, it was a challenge getting a hotel accommodation for tonight as well, but I've managed to do that. And, and then I think there'll be a lot of walking involved um, which which is not too bad today because I'll have my walking shoes on, but tomorrow I've got my, uh, my heels out for the first time in a few years. And I suspect I'll be walking to the Abbey and I think I'll have about a mile to walk tomorrow. But then I look at, as you've just shown some of those people that have been queuing for 14, 12, 14 hours and walking for practically all of that time, I can't complain, can I? I'll be getting, yes, I will go in the Abbey. I'm not entirely certain about what the seating arrangements are. I suspect I'll be towards the back, if not right at the back of the Abbey. But still, it'll be it'll be amazing to be there, to be a part of a historic event. One of the biggest events to take place in, in the country in the last 100 years, probably. Absolutely. It will be an amazing thing to be part of and a privilege for you. Nancy, thank you so much. Yeah, I suggest when you get here tomorrow, don't say in too loud a voice that you've had to walk for a mile and complain about it because these people have walked for like 10, 12 miles through the night uh, and they might not be too impressed. But yes, we wish you all the wealth, all the best. Thank you for, for sharing your story with us and uh, we hope tomorrow goes OK for you and your journey here. Thank you very much indeed, Nancy O'Neill. Uh, we'll talk to some more of the people here in the queue a little bit later uh, as the sun comes up here it's a beautiful autumn morning in london uh, but what's it going to be like for the rest of the day and tonight for those people who make the final journey here to london for the lying in state which finishes at 6 30 tomorrow morning chris can give us the uk weather morning chris i think we've found the person in the queue with the most medals certainly this morning this is Narin. good morning to you good morning how are you doing i'm fine thank you talk us through these medals they are splendid yes this one is iraq afghanistan uh, jubilee medal this is uh, officers medal this is territorial decoration next one is long service good conduct medal and uh, another jubilee medal and every, Jubilee Medal. every single one of them with the face of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Yes. That tells the story of why you so wanted to be here and yes. queue through the night. Just, just, just talk us through when you made that decision to come and why. Well, I made that decision on Friday and said to my wife, Michelle, that I'm going to pay respect to Her Majesty. And uh, on yesterday evening, just joined the queue and uh, here I am. How's it been? Because you've been here all night long, long night, cold yes, night. Yes, but we met friends as well. And uh, in friends, one, uh, Steph, she came from Switzerland and, uh, and with her niece uh, and uh, other colleagues as well. Just I'm worried, you're not going to lose your new friends at this point for no, talking to me, are you? No, 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 no. No, we will meet again. Oh, you'll, you'll meet again. Yes. As the Queen once said, didn't she? <laughs> During COVID, that was her message to all of us. We'll meet again. I think you need another medal today for, for being in the queue. They should be giving them out. Well, that is good enough. You've got your wristband, I suppose, haven't you? I have. Show us your wristband. It just fallen off. I hope you've not so. lost no, it because no, you're going to get to the front of the queue. Oh, OK, good man. Good man. Relieved to see it. Make sure you don't lose that because no. you really want to go inside. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Naren. Lovely to Thank meet you. you. Uh, these people who've oh, come nice. from... Bye bye. Well, he'll probably be lapping round in a moment to speak to us. Good morning to you. Hello, just from the BBC. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can I just ask you how are you doing? You're on BBC Breakfast. How are you? I'm knackered. <laughs> I, I got here at about nine o'clock, and it's hard work. So nine o'clock p.m. last night, and last twelve night. hours. Well, I normally work twelve hour shifts. What do you do? I work for the Met Police in one of the control rooms. Um, but it's nothing like this. You're sitting down for 12 hours. This is just continuous walking. So you're exhausted this morning. But just tell us why you wanted to be here for the Queen. I, 
I came for her mother 20 years ago and I saw as a youngster um, the coffin with Princess Diana and the mole and I thought I need to come down here, pay my respects, 70 years on the, on the throne, impeccable service plus my 91 year old mother's at home. So you're doing so for I her thought as well. I represent her. Hopefully she's watching right now and she'll see what you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so many people here talking to us this morning. That's it from now. But uh, BBC Breakfast will be on air from six o'clock tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning ahead of the state funeral, bringing you all the information you need to know and uh, sharing your stories. That's it from us for this morning, though. Hope you have a good day. <laughs>